Oh my god, I'm so stupid. I was talking the whole time. I had the mic muted. Oh my god. Okay. Huh, let me re let me redo the intro that I was just doing. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Sup, dudes. Welcome to the stream. We are. It's 8 p.m. over here. It's late. I've had a long day. Average Conan player IQ. I mean, I don't know. I feel I feel like I single-handedly lower the average. I don't think I'm going to do an eight hours. I do have to stay up late today, so I'm, maybe we'll use the stream to keep ourselves awake. Who's to say? Uh, air conditioner's on. Chair is squeaky. We are at that high-quality game room. I was going to make a thumbnail. I had a thumbnail set aside for this because I like to put some pr production quality into what I do, even if it's just a random stream. And I tried to assign the thumbnail to the stream, and the thumbnail was too large. The thumbnail was too large. I tried shrinking it. I tried lowering the resolution. Still too large. I'm like, how, why Why is this one so unbelievably thick? Got root beer here. We're, we're doing our best. We're going to put it together. So I got home. I, I was in the mood to shitpost. I had, a, I had a weird day today, boys. <sighs> I had a weird day today. Before we, before we even start doing story, story time. Okay. Oh, what am I doing on Sipta? That's a good question. What are we doing here, chat? What could we possibly be doing here? Standing in front of these two bizarre looking cubes. Whatever could be the point. Okay, so people ask me a lot about building. I'm sw I'm becoming I'm becoming a roleplay decorative builder. This is my attempt at building a beautiful roleplay base. I want your opinions. <laughs> but people ask me a lot for an updated PvP building video. And I've I've been doing some cooking. I've been doing some cooking. Okay. It's funny you bring up that resource dungeon, Mr. Cooper, because uh, that may or may not be relevant later. But uh, I've been doing some cooking, okay. And I've been I've been thinking about honeycomb, base design, you know, strategy, the whole thing. Today we're gonna. I am just. I've got like. I have an autistic fascination with fitting as much as I can into as small a space as possible. So here's the the space. Okay. Here's the space. Hackers. Yeah. It's that it just comes with the territory with Conan. It's it's not really a Conan server unless you've got somebody crawling through the fucking floors. It's a, it's a shame. If Funcom would make me admin, I would be there to assist you. But as as for, I don't think they, I don't think most of them like me. But here's here's the three by three space, okay? And we see not a whole lot. And you might ask yourself, with the with the new benches as large as they are, how much could we possibly fit into a little three by three space? What about what about the Firebolt Cauldron? That every PvPer would want for the cheaper for the cheaper dragon powder. How much can we pack into this little cube? Would you believe me if I said everything? Including, okay, in the back there is the upgraded precision fireball cauldron. We have another fireball cauldron for dragon powder. Look, this this is. PvP efficiency, alchemist bench, tanner's table, there's an armorer's bench in the back, preservation thing, underneath is the tannery, underneath. We got a furnace, we got the carpenter's bench, you have to squat so you can see it. We have a bed, we can cook, we've got storage, we've got lamps, and the blacksmith's bench is all the way over here, but check it out. You can reach everything from the base, plenty of storage, is this not? The most gorgeous base? Is this not? Literally every bench you need. And it's in the same it's in the same square footage. It's gorgeous, isn't it? A little three by three space, and you might be thinking, is it cheating to have one and a half spaces? Here's here's the tech behind that. Here's the tech behind that, okay. Let's, we're going with Terranian today. I like the Terranian set. Yeah, exactly. That's the point, Sean. It's like, it's a little, it's a little three by three. 
And I have a 2x2 two two variant that I was doing on the test lab. But we'll we'll fiddle with that in time. So let's what are we doing? Three by three? We're gonna we're gonna practice with a How do we wanna do this? So basically, okay. You get your floor plan. The problem in fact, let me let me do it this way. We'll 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 illustrate the point. If I were to have this. Okay. And I wanted to make use of that space. You could just do that. But then you have the uneven surface. Okay, so how do you make use of this bottom portion? It's all the, all the dead space. Well, you can offset foundations. So, let me, let me make sure the lights stay on in here. Let me make sure the lights stay on in here. Make sure these are relatively low. Okay. Excuse me, I'm getting texts on my phone. How unprofessional. We're trying to stream over here. Uh, fence foundation. Bam. So now, and the reason that's important, yeah, you could also lower it. I start with the lower just because it's easier. But if I was to just put extra stuff on top, right? Like if I was to expand upwards, if you imagine how you would honeycomb this, obviously you would, you would never build a freestanding base like this, but if you wanted to honeycomb this, you've got extra layers here. Sup, Scap? Yeah, I'll show you, Scap. We're uh, we're doing some experimenting with uh, with base stacking. And I'll show you how much we've, we've squeezed it already in a tiny little space. Every single functional base we need, including the big fireball in a 3x3, three three, one high. We're, we're making some magic happen. And see, if we if we had expanded upwards to fit that fireball bolt, which for everybody's reference, okay. Every, for everybody's reference, the fireball cauldron is too high it's too high to fit inside of one one high space. If I were to try to put a roof on that, it won't let me. But, let's go back inside. <laughs> but, with the right, with the right setup, everything fits in a three by three. You have to make some sacrifices. These are improved, a lot of these are improved benches instead of the, the max level. But you know, when you're when you're living the rat life, the greasy rat life, it is what it is. Yeah, today we're just fiddling, and you can you can reach everything. And the the important thing is like consideration for for living standards here, is if you're stacking stuff, you have to make sure you can reach everything. So I can reach the tannery. There's a grinder underneath there. I can reach the preservation box, fireball, improved fireball. There's an stuff there. There's an armor's bench in the back, tanner's table. The carpenter's bench is underneath here, if you can see it. Furnace. Blacksmith is in the corner. I mean, it's all there. And the thing is, you can reach it all easily. And we even have a campfire for, cook for cooking and the bedroll. This is the toughest thing to fit in there. Yeah, exactly. You can cut you can kind of reach everything. I even I even put a dryer in there, even though I would recommend putting that elsewhere. But I even have a bedroll in here, and that's the toughest thing to pack in here, because you can't spawn in some of these stacks sometimes. But I'll show you. I'll show you some of the magic. I am quite pleased by this setup. Like, this is as tiny as I can get it with all the benches, but then it's like, if we cut out the fireball cauldron, we could probably shrink that down to a 2 by 3 Possibly even a 2 by 2 So... That's what we're gonna do today for my excuse to, to shit post. Oh don't worry, I'll make a separate video because I have I have a strategy for honeycombing. I have a strategy for new base locations that are important. I'm I'm doing some cooking behind the scenes, boys. Okay. And I mentioned earlier I'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek of the next video that's coming up. It's actually not related to any of this. 
I just I'm I'm having an autistic breakdown as I fiddle with this stuff because there's so much there's so many little things that you can do to optimize your setup. So here's the, here's the thing. Let's do let's do the big ones first. Because I've managed to squeeze a lot into a 2x2, two two, but I have trouble getting the alchemy table in. And it needs to be about as perfect as you can manage it. I guess if, if you weren't flying, you could just walk. But I'll show you. This This is the big tech, because... Well, this isn't the big one, but it's it's one of them. Okay, this is this is a series of very small, but important optimizations. Motherfucker, the fly like launches me into the sky. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do this. That's about as close as that can get. Now, what do you, what do you, th okay, check this out. So this carpenter's bench, the, half the strategy here is making sure you know what you can build on and what you can, and what counts as a floor. The carpenter's bench, this is one level, and you can put chests and stuff on there. But believe it or don't, this beam is also completely functional. But you have to have... The reason we put this here is because this part of the blacksmith's bench with the water in it also counts as a buildable service. I use that for my fireball collagens, but I got to think it. What if I combine the two and try to put one of the more annoying things on top? Now this is one of those really annoying placements. But look at that. Look at this. Huh? Right? Pretty wild. But it gets it gets weirder, okay? It gets weirder. Okay. Let me see if I can get if this works on the first try, we'll see. Sometimes it's easier to do this. This one's finicky. This one you have to, like, you really have to want it. Oh, ah. Ah, look at that. Someone explained to me. In fact, it's probably better you don't. But behold. Armor's bench on the blacksmith. Furnace stacked on both. Huh? Tell me, tell me we're not cooking some crazy tech right now. Boys, tell me, tell me we're not. So then you think, all right. I'd love to have a tannery here. But uh, it collides with the carpenter's bench. What a tragic scenario that is. And this is old school technology, okay? This is like, this is, this is one of those, if you were around back in the day, this used to be how you would build a rat's nest anyways. Bear with me. Bear with me. Hold on. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna mess it up for sure. Bam. In fact, we can probably move that over a little bit. This is old school, like back in the day technology. Because now not only do you have storage. Oh, this is so finicky. Come on now. Come on now. Not only do you have the storage, but because you've offset it, now it's not sticking on the, the carpenter's bench and you can place it. 
pretty wild, some would say. Pretty wild. Now the trouble is... I think I might move this. Because we need to make more floor. If you want to call it a floor. So that we can do something else over here. Oh, I had it. Oh, I had it so quick that time. Let's try to get it as far over as possible. Bam. And I know what you're thinking. Pronk. That's all very well and good. What if I want to put a wall here? What do I do about that? Again, this is this is old school tech. I'm not even going to pretend that I came up with it. Put door frame down first, and then the wall. This one's still sticking out, but we're we're demonstrating here. It lets you lets you override it. It might not even let me actually put the wall there if I have the the bench. Let's put some walls down, boys. It is inside out. That's gonna bother me too. <laughs> let's 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 redo that. Let's let's redo that. So what I've noticed, and the most annoying thing about this entire process, okay, is that there are there are benches in this game that have hitboxes that are awful. Like the 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 armor's bench, that's pretty easy. Even even the tanner's table will sometimes let you put it on top of the the armor's bench. I'm not sure if we'll get it to place this time. I wasn't paying attention to it. But the alchemy bench has been breaking my balls. Cuz I can sometimes get it to place on the tanner's bench with enough support. But for some reason, the alchemy bench is wider than a single foundation wide. Why is it so fucking fat? I don't know. But it just is. And so I've been sitting here... ...racking my goddamned brain... ...trying to figure out how to make sense of the fact... ...that the alchemy... not the alchemy yet. Well, no, yeah, it is the alchemy bench. I was thinking of uh, back in the day when it used to just be uh, something else. I mean, there was just the fireball cauldron. Because the thing is, you can kind of get it to place like this, but then it curves in and it blocks your ability to interact with some of the other benches. It's the candles, but it's also, I mean, you can see... Let's go over here. You see how it's it's wider than a single foundation. It's just a it's a big table compared to armor's bench, which fits rather neatly onto a single tile. Well, yeah, they wanted people to have big old bases, but I mean, like here, we literally fit the precision one in the back, which is supposed to be a two by three by two. And we shaved off the top there. But the alchemy table for... Uh, uh, no, that's the armor's bench. That, see, that's then I faked myself out, because the armor's bench will always let you place it. Because that counts as a floor. That little part next to the tannery bench with the, the little dies in there, that counts. That counts as a floor. And then you come back and it's like, I can put the armor's table... I can put, th I can put it like this, but then it's sticking through the wall. It's it's very finicky. If I could move it just an inch that a ways, so it's not poking through the ceiling there. In fact, let me let me see. Maybe we can just close that off and call it a day. Let me let me just let's just find out. Nope. Nope. That some bitch is poking right out the side. <laughs> well, the thing is, you can't really move the tannery 
any far any farther forward. Because the hitbox, it collides ever so slightly, even though there's a space there. It's one of those things where, like, you can... I will, I will see if... Maybe it's just one of those things that has to be pixel perfect. Odds I do another official run? Zero percent. Zero percent. I don't know. It, it, it's if I get time. <laughs> if I get the time, I'll try it. See, this that's one of those little small optimizations. You see how right here on the carpenter's bench, it's got that little box there? It's got that little box there. So even if... And and check this out. I've, I've tried the wooden crates. They don't have the same collision. Reinforced wooden. It's like it'll let me place this, but because it ju it's it's going to be offset ever so slightly. Well, that's the thing. The alchemy table. I I tried that already, but uh, the alchemy table because it's got such a fat hitbox, it actually can't go where the armor's bench is. You see, you make it. You made the same mistake that I keep making because you think the benches are the same size because they're so similar, but the alchemy bench is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> It's such a pain. Uh, can you build an underwater base? You actually can't. You can build storage underwater, but here, I'll show you. Can't be placed in water. You can't put your benches. Even if it's just a little bit of water, you can't put them in water at all. It's one of those. It's just one of those weird things. You can put chests, you can put storage, you can keep your, your loot underwater, but you can't put benches down there. Yeah, that's another way to do it. Is you can you can give them the support and then cut it off. The trouble is, we're trying to fit this in a one high space. So like if this was foundational floors, this would be one high. And we've got Armor's bench, blacksmith, carpenter, furnace, and we're gonna have a tannery. And we can fit a lot more stuff in here. And it's one of those things where you really gotta you have to take into account because once we have this down, we still need to put down other benches. But this is this is still pretty functional for a two by two. Oh, that's right. I, I picked up the chest that were over here. That's why. <laughs> that's why. Let's do one long way, yes. Thank you, my man. Welcome to the stream. Put in a few here. Uh, you could do a carpet, but then the carpet's gonna block your vision of the chests underneath. We still we still need storage. We still gotta keep storage into account. It's one of those things where you might be able to get away with it like this. Let's see. That might be okay. I... Uh, that's gonna be poking out. There's no way this doesn't poke out. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> I even moved the uh, the tannery forward a bit. Hmm. I could try. I mean, maybe we can move the tannery all the way forward. But it it's so finicky. In fact, maybe if we curve it a little bit. Okay, it won't have support if I curve it too much, but... 
could you not expand an extra square? Well, then the base would be too huge. That would be ginormous as far as PvP is concerned. Unlivably large. Well, you can't start with the alchemy bench because the armor's bench and the blacksmith's bench and the furnace and the carpenter have to be in these corners here. Because otherwise those won't stack properly. And the trouble with the alchemy bench is because its hitbox is so unforgiving, if you start with it, it's virtually impossible to get the part that's, uh... The part that's sticking out... Well, I mean, the thing is, like, you could, um... You could probably cover it, but for the sake of my own autism, I want to see if I can squeeze it in without... I always forget to put the chest back. Squeeze it in without having to put anything down. Because if we can do that, then we're, then we're golden. Then we're basically... We're cruising, as they say. I almost put the armor's bench. See, I would have had, I would have been excited again and be like, "Wow, I could do it!" See, because what it's relying on is partially the chest. And partially... That's totally sticking out. Fuck. This is actually worse than the last time. We just made it worse. We're making things terrible. Oh! Oh, wait a minute. This might be the one. No, it's not. Oh, yes, it is! Oh, you can't click it, though. That's what's important. Let's fucking go, chat. <laughs> we did it. Although that wall's backwards. Let's, let's redo that. Let's let's have some class. Let's fucking go. <laughs> That's the right bench, right? I didn't just fucking okay. Improved. Well, I thought it was worse because it looked like it was sticking out more, which it kind of is, but I guess this corner's not enough. So we did it. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And the thing is, right, we have to take into account usability. Okay, so I... And this is intentional. I've intentionally put the tannery there so that you can enter in on this side. So that's the plan. The door's going to be there. It's all coming together. A horse stable? <laughs> I don't want that one. Did the one week base get cracked up? You mean the one on the stream? I have no idea. After every stream, I go and I hide the loot somewhere else. So even if somebody poked in there, there's... Unless they found me sleeping in a, in a hole somewhere. In which case, then we would be boned. I haven't logged in since the last stream, though. So <laughs> I have no idea. So we need... Like, when, you think, when you're thinking PvP, right... You need the blacksmith's bench. That's right there. You need the armor's bench. You need the alchemy bench. You need the tanner. You need the furnace. Like, these are all things that you need. And then you think... And this is the other issue, too. Is if I want a tanner's table for stretching hides, I can fit it in here sometimes. I can kind of put it, like, right here. But reaching the blacksmith's bench becomes a bit of a task. You can remove the chest once that's built. It only needs it temporarily. So you can kind of get in there and get the blacksmith's bench. But it gets harder and harder as time goes on. Pretty sure I can get the tannery to stick on here if I get it just right. Is this worth it? Of course it is. You guys saw the original over there. I mean, that's a 3x3. Three three. A 3x3 three three and it's loaded. Yeah, you can walk through bench thralls. So, like, we've already we've already proved the concept with a 3x3. Three three. We're just seeing how much can we fit into 2x2. Two Because two. if you're building a freestanding base, or let's say a rat's nest even, every little bit of space you shave exponentially reduces the cost of the honeycomb. 
<laughs> the one by one? I don't think anything fits in a one by one. Fit a grinder in a bedroll. <laughs> Used to be able to see the. I think the alchemy bench is blocking this because you can put this on top of that too and stack it like an accordion. It's troublesome, troublesome, troublesome. So many, so many things to consider. Because here, this this is a pretty simple setup. Like this isn't super complicated. You can see we've got the carpenter's bench and the blacksmith with the furnace on top. Like, that's kind of the only crazy tech, besides we've got a... a fl it's not floating, it's supported by a door frame, which you can place through some objects. Like, this is all pretty simple. You could print this out. And you can reach everything. But at the end of... Like, this isn't rocket science. That's not crazy. But then you think, like, when it's empty, it's like, eh, that's still kind of... Still kind of a lot of space, isn't it? Like, maybe that's just me, because I look at this, and I, I see all that empty space in the back, and I'm like, well, that's kind of wasteful, isn't it? Like this here. Like, there's so much air back here not being used. And sure, you could just put chests all over it, right? Like, you could put chests back here and just stack boxes all over the place. But that's just needless clutter. You don't need that much storage. We've got access. we got three up there. One, two, there's a bunch of stuff in the floors. Shit, I'm stuck. Oh, fuck. We got stuck. <laughs> there we go. All right. See, even without flying, you can climb back there. Look at that. You can climb to the back of the base. Do a little, do a little cheeky rub your nuts in the fireball cauldron. The thing is, I don't know what what to do to get the rest of the stuff in there. Because, I mean, you could probably sacrifice the Tanner's table, right? Like, you probably don't need that in your core, necessarily. You absolutely need a Fireball Cauldron. And you'd have to go with a Tier 2, because this is not large enough for anything else. The way you know for sure, too, is it'll say not enough contact with ground, but not overlapping, and then you can kind of fiddle with it and see if you can give it enough support to make it work. Hmm. I, I think you you probably just have to drop the alchemist bench because it just I think it just takes up too much space. What if you made a side? What what are all these expansion ideas? Ooh, we need to squeeze this in as tiny a space as possible. There's simply no way. Let's say we. Eh, you kind of need the potions, though, don't you? Well, I know we can fit more in here. I'm certain of it. I am 100%. 100% certain. An animal pen? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> a master bedroom yeah that's the thing is like you can you can just pump it out I mean really you could do that with all of your PvP materials is craft them in like a sandstone cube and then just move the stuff inside yeah you can do the fireball underneath here but I'm pretty sure it blocks the fur oh fuck now we have to do the whole thing all over again that's the other downside to this. You can't uh, you can't take something out and redo it. <laughs> it uh, it messes with everything. Fit in the luxurious bed. Yeah, how about that. I actually haven't tested to see if this overlaps or not. I'm pretty sure it does, because the Fireball's got a... Like, the small one actually has a really weird hitbox to it. It's got a really odd, very bizarre and, and unforgiving hitbox to it. it might have been easier to take these walls off. But... Hmm. May not require frag... Yeah, they're actually removing frag... Oh! 
Oh, I saw it. The removing fragment cost from a lot of the items. Am I insane? I literally I saw it go. Oh, there it is. It's right in here. You gotta pull it in. You gotta, you gotta want it. You really gotta. You gotta shimp. It's like right on the corner. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Just let me have it. Don't you break my balls. Don't you do this. I am, I am like zoomed in. I've got the gamer hunch going. Oh my god, we we lost it. It was it was right there. We're aligned well. It's literally yeah. There we go. Not even close. Not even close. So we've got that, and we've got all of this. Thank you, thank you, everybody stopping by. I'm trying to think of the absolute minimum. Absolute minimum we would need. And you'll see how the alchemist bench does not let you place it the same way the armors does. It's, it's super... Super demanding. For some reason. And then if we switch back to the armor's bench. with Yeah, see, within no time we've got it right there. But if I, if I just switch to the alchemy table in the exact same spot, doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. And the thing is, it should fit, right? Like, it's not... I guess you could say it's colliding with the fence foundation. But it's not sticking too far through it. Well, yeah, you can't reach all the boxes, but you can you can reach most of them. I mean, most of those are there for stability. Like, we have the same thing going on in the in the main 3x3. Three three, where there's a lot of... a lot of chests underneath that don't do anything, they're just for... They're just for stability. I mean, I'm pretty happy that we're able to get the precision fireball, because that's, that's the big one. That's the fattest bench and the one that you need the most. Those chests are just to, to lag out whoever raids you, I guess. <laughs> As it calculates the stability loss of 25 different things missing. Support boxes, yeah. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's filtering in. Yeah, see, <laughs> people were giving me some flack for the 2x2, two two, but this is the 3x3. Three three. Even put the dryer in there. I mean, this is your default 3x3. Three three. It doesn't add any extra height because we offset the inner foundations. So we can fit a two-block high bench in a one-block high space. It's quite nice. I'd say this is good tech. Good stuff. And this is like the mini version that I can't seem to make work. Although I think you might, maybe you just have to make some sacrifices if you're doing a two by two. We are actually worried about height. We want to keep this at uh, maximum one high. That's our max height limit. Oh yeah, this is going to be my go-to, because there's a lot of spaces, uh, especially in the, the original map, where you have a very tiny space, but if you know how to stack your benches, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. The amount of little places you can hide inside. Let's say, let's say we just drop the idea of the alchemy table. We've got the fireball, we got the tannery, got the armory, got the carpenter. 
I guess maybe we'd want to put a tan or yeah, the tanneries table for the, the stretching hides for the bombs. Well, if we were building something as wide as a map room, I don't think we'd have to worry about bench stacking. I think we'd be <laughs> I think we'd probably be okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, the alchemy thing is like, well, we, I'll just put it outside, I guess, and craft the potions overnight or something. I guess I could put more chests down. I wanted to see if it would let me put the tanners without it. Because some benches you can. Like, if you just wanted to stack fireballs, you can put the fireball by itself on this. Whereas some benches will require some support boxes. Well, I mean, realistically, if you're a solo player, I mean, what you should honestly be doing is hiding your loot if you're not using it anyways. <laughs> like, have a base, but then, you know, body vault it somewhere. <laughs> I think, get, especially on 4X servers, I don't, I don't know how you could possibly possibly keep up with bomb production these days. Like, there's no way. Let's do it a long ways. Come oh, on. It's breaking my balls all of a sudden. I did. I saw your webum. I think that's what they call it, right? Webums. <laughs> Such a lucky find. Sometimes it's good to slide off a cliff face, isn't it? Oh yeah, you see, this is why I dropped, because I, originally I was using the fireball in the middle here. And the reason I stopped is because now if I want to put support boxes here, I can't it. Like I can kind of branch them off here, but then you're kind of screwed. Yeah, see, now we can put the tanner's table down and we can take that out. <laughs> It's not too bad. That's everything except the alchemy tape. So we can stretch hides, tan them, make dragon powder, smelt, do bows. We got the blacksmith and the armor's bench. Am I forgetting anything else? I think that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think of what else I would need. Grinder? I mean, yeah, you could put the grinder anywhere, honestly. Grinder is one of those things. You can just stuff it on something. You can put it on most of these benches. Just pack it right there. Why not kill? Well, I want this to not require any recipes that have to be farmed. Like, I want this to be something you can, like, just join a server, plop it down. <laughs> Forgetting the die bench? Yeah. <laughs> How fucking big is that bench again? <laughs> Where is that? God, I haven't made it. So many, so many gigantic benches. What tab is that in? Does anyone know? It's not in religion. Or it's not in general, rather. Is that one you have to spawn? Scrolling past it? It's in alchemy. On what planet is that alchemy? Yeah, look at the scale. Look at the size of this bench. That's a two by two by itself. For dies. You want to know what I do with this bench? I slap it on the porch. I just leave it outside the base. I don't even look at it. <laughs> Crap, that shit and leave. <laughs> if we wanted this to be extra, we could fit a bedroll in here, I think. I think that would be a pretty a pretty pretty reasonable addition. Although I'm not sure I actually can. You can put your bedroll in the door tunnel. It's a little it's a little wonky, but Oh my god, my steamer setting my streamer settings were off. I don't give a shit. I've already logged into a server. <laughs> it's all out in the open. I already had bedrolls on my hotbar too. I'm a dummy. <laughs> the thing about the bedroll.
The thing about the bedroll is that it has weird requirements for where you can place it. And you kind of have to do it at the end, or else it won't let you put it where you would like to. I wonder if maybe I can rearrange these support boxes down here to bring the floor up a little bit. Once, once you've got it placed, you no longer need the support boxes. You, you only need a few. Here we go. We can try to bring this up. I think that's about the same height. It is. It is. Let's go. Bam. <laughs> well, now we have to test if we can actually spawn in here. That's the big test. <laughs> That's the real test. Let's see, where can we put walls on? The support box, it does so much heavy lifting, it's unreal, I'm telling you. Oh no, I can't even put the walls here. Uh, actually, I think I can just move the armor's bench. I think that should fix it. But why not this one? What is this colliding with? Oh, you know what? It's the bedroll, probably. Yeah, shit. That really fucks it up. That's what I was saying earlier about the bedroll has such weird requirements for where you can put it and what it needs for space. You have to do the bedroll last, because if you try to put anything else down, it'll mess with it. So we have to pick this down. Then we have to let's do the wall first. I think the armor's bench is the only one that I feel comfortable taking out and then putting back in. Even though it's really like it shouldn't be so easy to place that. <laughs> but it totally does. I think we can go ahead and I think we can go ahead and seal this fucker off. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, it's all all sealed up, snug as a bug in a rug. <laughs> I know. I apologize. I make the game look fun. <laughs> when I go to hell after I die. I think my major crime's gonna be all the people that I fooled into playing Conan on purpose. Oh, that's right. I can't put. I have to put the door first, then the bedroll, because it's so, it's so pity. Bam. Let's let's put a lamp in there just for. Just for decorative purposes. Bam. All right. Let's see if we can actually get out of there once we spawn in there. Did I not click my bedroll? Is it not going to let me spawn in there now? <laughs> it's pretty sure I clicked the bedroll. Is it just did it just give up on me? Is it too? T is it because it was on the support boxes? It is taking a weirdly long time. Oh, let's go! Hey, and we can move. We can get in and out. I must have just forgotten to click it. The doubters are in shambles. You can spawn in the two by two. Tannery, Tanner's table, armor, got the blacksmith. Yeah, we can still click that. Fireball underneath, furnace, plenty of storage. A grinder. And you know what? We still have space here. We still have usable space here. 
if we didn't have so much so much issue with the alchemy tables, dude, we could fit the alchemy bench in here, and then we wouldn't have to worry about anything. We'd have literally everything we need in here. A dryer? Uh, I mean, I, I think, I think the dryer might be too tall. It's one of those things where, like this this furnace right here, like this spot. This counts as a floor. I don't know if it'll let me put it from this angle. Building here a black spot. Oh, it's the fucking it's the bedroll. <laughs> How would that block my spawn point game? Like that counts as a floor. So you can stack on that. Uh, well, I think if you were if you were farming dry wood, like insulated wood for, for building with, I don't think I would use one dryer. I think what I would do... Okay, Spongebob. We're gonna obviously honeycomb this. This this is the core. The point is to keep it as thin as possible. <laughs> Patty Flipper's getting mouthy. Unbelievable. As for this, I don't think... I think it's too tall. I think that's the problem. It's ever so slightly too tall to be fit in here. But that's okay. This is this is still pretty good. This is this is a livable This is a livable 2x2 two two with a surprising amount of functionality. And then if you wanted to do the 3x3, three three, then you could have everything. <laughs> and support boxes within honeycombing? I don't think it does anything. <laughs> I think you would just wind up lagging yourself out. <laughs> Preservation box? Um, that might actually fit. I don't think you could use the big one. I think you'd have to use the tiny one, because the big one has... If you can see... See see how it won't even let me post up on the roof? Because the bedroll is so neat. See how the big one has the little... Uh, the black ice on top? This is... this like That little ice on top breaks my balls. Because trying to fit it in there... It has such unforgiving... Collision. It's unreal. Whereas this might, like, I can put that. In fact, I might even be able to squeeze this in here somewhere. It's so goofy where this fits. Oh, you know what? I should probably get, pick up the lamp. I forgot the lamp was even there. That might have even been bothering the, uh, the other one. don't think we might even have to just for the sake of argument ghost our way in yeah I don't think I don't think there's enough space for that in, in this base anyhow I mean I could put it here and then I just wouldn't have a then I just wouldn't have a bedroll although the bedroll is pretty extra anyways I mean the campfire that obviously fits because that you can put on top of absolutely everything. In fact, let me uh, let me let me add some more usable boxes here. Let's add some storage here. Put the campfire on top. Bada bing, bada boom. Actually, the, the real test is, can we get in and out? Yes, we can. <laughs> Are there any good secret base spots? Nope, not anymore. This game's too old. Zero percent chance people haven't discovered wherever your base location is. I might be able to fit a bedroll, but I don't think I'll be able to spawn in here. That's the trouble. Lamp. Is the green bedroll easier to place? I always thought it was the other way around. 
Terranian bear. I didn't even know there was another one there. Hmm. What are we doing? We are satisfying an autistic urge that I have to build a very stacked base. I have a lot of the DLCs for this game, but I don't have all of them. Alright, you know what, what might come in clutch here? shut me in. Uh, the bulls do count as a surface. You can put boxes on those. Right, hold on. Let's, let's not give up yet on that idea. Uh, it doesn't raise them up enough. I was hoping that would like offset the height enough. They would be equal. They're so close though, maybe. Uh, this is... Incense works better. I've actually never tried the incense. Is there no search function? I can't like type in a... Where do I find the incense? Probably just spawn it in, yeah. Well, the thing about bowls is that you can't actually stack them on top of each other very well. It doesn't provide as much surface area as you would hope. Let's see, does that do it? That's almost perfect. I wish I could get rid of the door, but if I get rid of the door, I won't be able to put it back. <laughs> base is going to smell amazing. This base is going to stink. You're not even going to be able to breathe in here. It's almost perfection. Almost. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I almost just had it on accident. Oh, let's fucking go. Door closes. It's all in there. Yeah, clutch call on the incense. That's just high enough. Okay, the real test. Can we get can we spawn in here? <laughs> yeah, that's the real test. <laughs> Character. Remove bracelet. And I'm certain I clicked bedroll last time and it put me on the beach. I think the game's having trouble actually figuring out where to spawn me here. Because this is on my solid state. Oh no, it's not letting me in. Put me in. Put me in. Okay. We can spawn in it and we can move. Let's go boys yeah I was gonna say it made me pull twice last time too I think that's just the issue with it ah what a nice cozy little home I could live here all day imagine everything is within arm's reach you know what would look goofy imagine we put thralls on all these benches <laughs> let's let's do that Let's see how goofy this base looks when it's actually got 
people in it. Smelter. I, I typed that wrong. Armor. I think we could put a cook on the campfire, can't we? Yes, we can. Oh, motherfucker. What, he's just gonna be back there, I guess. <laughs> I forgot to, forgot to make sure he's a uh, broken thrall. I think I just need an armor. Armor's bench. Go here. Oh, can we still reach the blacksmith's bench? Yes, we can. That's like pixel perfect clicking, but we can. Do that. Put this guy in there. This lady in the campfire. There. There we go. <laughs> what a nice, beautiful, well lived in little home we have here. I don't think I could even fit it fit a dancer in here if I wanted to. Yeah, it's gotta be thralls are so needy with their floors. There's no way. <laughs> Why did you bait me with the Easter egg video? <laughs> because it amuses me. <coughs> and I'm a menace. It is cozy, right? I, You know what? I'm a big fan of the Terranian set. I think that plus a lamp makes it look nice and kind of warm and cozy. Kind of like how hoarders just surround themselves with trash to feel secure. We're kind of the same way. <laughs> That's a two by two. We can finally slay this man for. But that is a two by two. And it's only one block high because we offset the inner foundation. That's fucking big. Do big benches? I would never. Big benches drive me insane. Thank you. I, I thought the Easter egg video. It, the Easter egg video gave me the excuse I needed to to bring out all my my niche hobbies. See, the problem with the big benches is that not only do they fill the space that they fill visually, but their actual hitbox is even bigger than that. And I don't, I don't think that the reduction in cost actually justifies this space. It's one of those things where, how much, like as a solo player, how much clothing do I need? How, how much carpentry do I need? Whereas, you know, I would want to make sure I've got the fireball cauldron. Whereas like in this space, we have the fireball cauldron. That's the only one that I would want. The rest of it, it's like, you know, we have a shitty furnace. That's not so bad. Armor's bench isn't so bad. But it's not the end of the world either. Yeah, I, I have a host of nerdy hobbies. and When I noticed uh, some of the patterns in this game, I, I just took it as an excuse to shitpost. <laughs> and see, Akira gets it. The point of, of making sure it's as tiny as possible is that now if you find literally any space in this game for a 2x2, two two, you can fit an entire base in there. No, the basic one still doesn't fit. The basic one's still a pain in the butt. It's it's just a weird... In fact, we can put them side by side. You can see what I mean. Even though it is technically a smaller bench in height, width-wise, it's the same. It's the same dimensions in every other way. It juts out a little bit less. But it's not enough to actually open any opportunities. And it still has the, the janky ass hitbox on it. So you can't really stack it with anything.
magic. That's beautiful. I'm very happy with that, actually. That, that is a gorgeous, a gorgeous finish. I guess I could log on to the server and see if our base is still there. <laughs> or they see that. Actually, you know what? I haven't logged in in over a week. It probably decayed. Even if it was still there. A one by one? I mean, let's say you wanted to do a one by one for some reason. Let's say for some reason you're a maniac and you wanted to do a one by one. I think you could probably fit a fireball cauldron, a, be a bed, a fluid press, maybe? Yeah, that's the other thing. If anybody punches through that wall, they're gonna... <laughs> it's like, oh shit! The bombs! It's fucking loaded! Nine bombs and you're rich. Harper during cauldron? No, not in a one by one. In a one by one? I mean, I don't even know what the point of a one by one would be. That's too tiny even for my taste. And just for the sake of argument. Yeah, that's all I do. I body vault all my shit. You'd be foolish not to. There's, there's no way to... I don't know how anybody could possibly build a base that defends against 4x farm, especially with the, the correct dungeon. There's no way. But of course, the point is the point isn't to keep it a two by two, because, in my experience, no matter how tiny your base is, the resident poop sock clan on the server they're gonna bomb it for shit. Because the average so-called alpha clan in this game they play like fucking weenies. They'll report any real competition that shows up. They just want to live out their power fantasies. So even if it's just a one by one made of sandstone, they'll one hundred percent nuke it into the dirt. So, but the point is, right, if I was to honeycomb this, the smaller the core is, the cheaper it is to add girth to it. I've talked with Dennis about that, and the trouble is they can't just shrink the clan size. The best they could do is prevent new people from joining, just because of the way the game is. I mean, I keep, I keep saying just wipe the fucking servers and then you know, do some big changes, but they don't want to wipe the servers. That seems wasteful, doesn't it? Starting with the alk, that seems like that seems like such a waste. Did you even fit an armor's bench in here? I think you can. Yeah, that's a waste of time. There's there's no way you're gonna fit anything in there. I, I think even with support boxes, you'd probably just be up shit creek. <laughs> Although you might be able to put the armor's bench in here if you put the walls on afterwards. I don't think there's a point to that, though. I think that would be a waste. That would largely be a waste. Yeah, see, Wesley is thinking the same thing I was just thinking. The thing is, you have to start with the fence foundations. And those have really unforgiving collision. But if you did the fireball, then built up a little bit, then armor's table, and then put the walls on... I think you'd have a lot of room to do stuff. Uh, triangles are kind of annoying. But it's funny you bring up triangles. Because, as I said, I'm not going to spoil everything, but I've been doing some cooking. My dudes, I've been doing some cooking with some of these strategies. I'm going to show you something. I am going to show you something. We're going to do black ice. Just cause just just to prove the point, okay. In any In fact you could even probably get rid of this, but bear, bear with me, bear with me. I've been doing some cooking. Let's 
suppose suppose okay let's just pretend in fact let's just look at it as a unit right here like this this is a one by two space Let's do this. I think I'll have to put the door on after. I might actually be able to put it on now if I close it from the inside. Damn. Okay. So let's say you wanted to build a vault, but you, like me, are a brokey. You're broke as hell. And vaults be expensive. Thank you, India. Appreciate it as always, my man. I don't know how long we're going to stay up, but I was just in the mood to shit post. <laughs> Suppose you want to build a vault. And it's got... hundred forty thousand health on it. This setup... Obviously, you go through the wall, but let's say like you're in a cave, right? And this is against the wall. 50,000, 70,000, 70,000. And you can reach, if you really look, you can reach your chest. I call it the poor man's vault because it costs so few resources. And I know what you're probably thinking. Kronk, what if, what if some fool shows up with explosive arrows because you can technically you can technically shoot through the window and hit the chest and then just grab the loot box but this is why we're using the wedge foundation this blocks the explosives and you can still use the storage it's the health of a vault a fraction of the cost. Tell me this isn't industrious. And of course, you would probably want to put another layer on top. You'd probably want to put some layers on the side of the chest. But the point is, any any little space in your base, set it aside. Bam. It's free. It's free real estate. Imagine if every box you had in your base cost another 300000 to get into because I've been doing some cooking. I've been doing some cooking. I'm making the most of space. I'm making the most of, of honeycombing. Increasing the cost of raiding a base, shrinking down your footprint, and dragging out the cost of every little piece. I've been doing some cooking, boys. Tell me that's not sleek, though, huh? <laughs> you can't even see the chest. Open the door and like, oh, fuck, I guess I gotta, I guess I gotta blast it. I mean, even if even if you did, did did the wall, that's still 70,000 health on top of the chest, and it costs almost nothing. It's dirt cheap. It's free. It's free real estate. Kind of big, boys. Kind of big. I don't want to spoil everything. I've been doing some cooking. <laughs> I've said that probably a million times in the stream. But uh, we have some... Because, you know, it annoys me how little innovation occurs in Conan PvP. Everybody just builds a ceiling base. But we have plans. We have plans for alternatives. I've been doing some thinking. See, I said thinking instead of cooking. It just sort of, it just satisfies my autism to just take a little space and do the most. So I have I have plans, Chad. I have plans. But that's enough of that. Let's go. Let's go be productive. Let's go check the server and see if we still have loot. Actually, you know what? Hold on. How many people we got in here? We have 150. Okay, I didn't want to make sure it wasn't too many people in here. I'll give you guys. I'll give you guys a quick, a quick preview of the upcoming videos content. I'm going to give you guys a little hint. I'm going to, how many, actually, let me ask first. How many of you were here for the last stream? <laughs> we had some, uh, 
We did a little something something. I know a lot of people were here for the last stream. Let me see if I can find what I'm going to show you guys <laughs> before I, I, I'm having trouble finding it. Okay, let's let's switch to the screen cap. Let's mute this. This is a replay of the live stream. But just to refresh everybody. To refresh everybody. I download I think it's right along here. I think it was before this. Aha, it was here. Okay. So last stream. I attempted the correct dungeon for the very first time, fully corrupted, naked as I do, butt-ass naked with bum gear on, because my testosterone levels are so freakishly high, I would sooner slay myself than put pants on if not necessary. So we went in there, we risked it, we risked it all. Let's, let's skip ahead. Yeah, we were we we were fiddling, we were fiddling, and uh, we tragically met an untimely demise. Nobody told me there was poison in there. We got poisoned. Three stacks of poison on a hundred health. It's a rough ride. It's a rough ride. But the chat, the chat, started to say some curious things. Crunk. You need to put pants on. Kronk, you need to prepare. Kronk, you've got to put armor on. Kronk, you need antidotes. There was a lot of there was a lot of uh, use of the need word in in the, in the chat. So, when the stream was over, I cleared some time in my schedule. I wanted to just uh I wanted to go practice the correct dungeon. I just wanted to see how it goes. How 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 well could I do? Yeah, this is the gamer N word. We're gonna we're gonna pull it up. We're gonna pull we're gonna pull it up. We're gonna we're just gonna take a little little little, little seek. And you can see, okay. Basic star metal sword, same fit as the last time. A hundred health, fully corrupted, grubs, weak aloe potions. In fact, this time we don't even have a shield. We got rid of our loot. This was the second try when I turned off the stream, okay? The second try. And you can see I'm mousing over my stats. Everything is, everything adds up. We go in. We go in this time, now that I know there's spiders. We're, we're clocking them. We go for them first. We're, we're doing our crowd management. Look at this. Look at this tech. Tell me that's not clean. We're using the inanimate golems to build space so we can heal, clump them up, and get them with the combo. Needed a shield. See? These people, they don't understand. They don't get it. The boss comes in. It takes a little while because we have to play safe. Mace or shorts. <laughs> Weenies. Weenies. The boss comes. We, we get him. We get him. We're clapping him. Same thing with the with the golems. Same thing with the golems. Doing just fine. Staying topped off on health. We're, we're clapping them. We whiffed that one a couple. Let's skip to a, a more skillful bit of gameplay. We're, we're doing well. We're stacking them. We're stacking them. That was a bit of a weak dodge, but we're doing okay. And then we keep going. We got him. The undead phase, we stack them up, we chop them down, butt naked. Complete, complete slaughterhouse in here. Okay, there's not a single creature that can even match my skill. I killed every zombie first. Dragon slot. This one's a bit of a freebie, because I mean, I think everybody knows how to avoid dragons. You just stack them up. Second try. Butt naked, fully corrupted, grub, weak aloe potions, bada bing, bada boom. The non believers are in shambles. Malding, even. Seething. Vibrating with rage. No pants. 
no problem. But it occurred to me. It occurred to me. How foolish is it to say that you need gear to complete any kind of PvE content in Conan Exiles? It's an open secret. This game's kind of easy, isn't it? What do you think all these other clips are? What do you think all these other clips are, boys? What do you think this is? What do you think all these clips are? I went through and I completed every single, every single dungeon. I killed every single world boss, killed every single maelstrom boss. I even farmed the maelstrom butt naked. Butt naked. To prove a point. Okay, same fit. Weak aloe potions, grubs, bum sword, fully corrupted. To prove a point, my dear chat, you don't need pants. What you need is to get good. And you ask me, it's funny, did you do the volcano dungeon? Not only did I do the volcano dungeon, this is in a different folder. I haven't organized it yet. Uh, I think it's this one. This one took a few tries, but not only did we do the volcano dungeon, we did it without ice. Notice, heat stroke the entire time. Heat stroke the entire time. Feeding off weak aloe potions and grubs. We did the whole thing dying of heat stroke. And what's even better is we made it out to every single boss. Let's get back to that other folder. Every single boss, every single dungeon. Some of these fights, because the sword was so weak, it took me some of these bosses. Let me find, let me find, oh my god, let me find the fucking where where's the elephant thunderfoot look at the duration of this this is a 30 minute kill on on bigfoot because this motherfucker does not take any damage from the sword it's literally 30 minutes of me just slapping this meat shield Thirty minutes to kill this fucking thing, but I think it'd be surprised. The, the video, in fact, I had the I had the script up. It's like it's nineteen pages so far. Killed oh, the Age of War will make this easier, believe it or not. I did I, I practiced on the the test live. This is the hard version. Oh, prevent this as in make it easier to kill. Oh yeah, that actually makes sense. Now that I think about it, excuse me, I'm a dummy. The only reason I had the folders up here is to try to organize it because <laughs> there was. There is so much stuff. I'm telling you, boys. I am telling you. This was a process to film. There's so much content I didn't even know existed. Do you want to know one of the surprise ones? How many, how many of you guys have fought the Executioner? You know this boss fight where there's like a million skeletons? Thanks for stopping by, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, this one is such a pain to do while naked. It's unreal. Because if you don't kill them fast enough, they start to respawn. But I finessed every boss in the game, face tanking them, using every little strategy in the book. It was big. It's big. I'm just, I'm just saying. Would you believe me if I said we got the wine cellar on the first fucking try? And to prove the point, I didn't even just skip to the dungeon. I didn't even skip to the boss, rather. I literally cleared the entire dungeon on the way over there. Fought everything. Including the little mini bosses, all the, all the little the whites and whatnot. Even the hordes of the undead, because we can't just ignore those and tank them. We got to kill them all before we can poke this boss. Butt ass naked, boys. Butt ass naked. I'm just saying the non-believers are going to be in shambles pretty soon. Once this, once this hits live, all the pants wearers are going to be in shambles. <laughs> it's going to be unreal, boys. I'm telling you, I am telling you, the facts will be out there. Non-believers, shambles. 
Uh, the Demon Turtle, I did... Oh, that's not a top-tier weapon. This weapon has 7% armor pen on it and only about 40 damage. This is a bum sword. You mean this Demon Turtle? Do you mean this? This is the same model, though. It's got the same damage. Of course, this one's finessing me a little bit at the start. These, this one was kind of annoying because the, the undead shalebacks have really dumb attack speed to them. Oh, that's I'm glad you said that, Zach, because not only is this not nerfed mob damage, this is barbaric difficulty. So the, dam the, the enemies are buffed and I'm nerfed. I do less damage. I do 20% less damage and they do more. The believers will be in shambles. Naked, weak aloe, grubs, bum sword, no armor pen, barbaric difficulty, fully corrupted. All the people who say that you need pants to play this game. I'm telling you, shambles. It's going to be all shambles. All in due time. Look at, look at that beautiful rolling poke. Using the rolling thrust for the, for the, the armor pen. Unbelievable bosses don't stand a chance in fact i was gonna do a no hit version but there are some bosses where the damage actually hits you before the animation starts so there's actually no way to avoid it so i was gonna do a no hit and i was like ah well you know <laughs> maybe not no yep, this is the get good this is the get good in fact some of these let me show you let me show you one one of the one of these is perfect one of these is fucking beautiful. It's the, uh... Oh, and you can see. You can see. We're we're in a dirty dance over all the bosses. The Sipta bosses, too. I mean, I'm talking... We went to the summoning pools and summoned every boss here, too. Every single one of them. The script for this video is already 19 pages long. So it's going to be like an hour and a half long video. I won't spoil which bosses were actually a big difficulty for me, a big difficulty spike, but I'm sure you could probably guess. Some of these were tough as hell, but other ones were not. Let me see if I can find... Look at this. Phenomenal. I finessed this man. Let me skip back a little bit. Jukes. Slap. Jukes. Slap. He doesn't even stand a chance. Doesn't stand a chance. Uh, what do you mean by bugged? Cause I I killed I killed him. He summoned. And grub. The reason there's a grub save title on there is because because you can take four hits with the uh, the steel food. The grub heals one health every three seconds. That one health is literally enough to save your life because it counts as a full hit. So there was, in that fight, I got down to one health and the grub saved my ass. The grub is like, get down, Mr. President, and it takes the shot. It saved me so many times, it's unreal. There's so many boss fights where I'm like walking away with one health left. That's not the right, oh, right, Blood Moon is after this. Bam. I did him in a row. I was just stacking boss bodies over here. Bada bing, bada boom. Did I, ki did I kill the arena champion? Of course I did. I did the entire Warmaker dungeon. I think I did... Yeah, here's me fighting him in the Citadel. I also fought him at the pools. It's the same boss, though. I think I did Warmaker here. You know what's ironic too? Get a load of this. The arena, the arena shit. I didn't die to a single boss in the Warmaker dungeon. You want to know what I died to? Where, where's I died to the fucking traps. I died to the traps. I'm the only person in the game who would die to those because I was naked. <laughs> it's like. I'm probably the only person in the game who has ever died to those traps. But because you have so low health, they actually kill you. It's unreal. 
See, look at how much that ticks for. It's 20 damage per tick, which would be fine if you were in a normal build. But if you're naked, it's like... <laughs> That's unreal. I did the Dagon dungeon. I did... I even did the fucking Sobek cave, which can somebody explain to me why those are so tanky? Can somebody explain why these are so fucking tanky? 4,500 health on them, plus the armor. And they all have the one-handed sword, so they have unreal hyper armor. It's like, it's surprisingly one of the most difficult bits of content I've ever done. Is this fucking Sobek cave. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, but then you have to put points into authority. I went I went full full agility, full strength, full grit. I didn't want to sacrifice a single look at how much damage these fucking things soak in. You know what it is? It's cause Sobek armor was good for five fucking seconds, and then somebody bitched about it on the forums and they nerfed it into the ground. It's not it's still not that bad. It's really not bad. But the cave is so weirdly difficult to run. What I wound up doing is I just sprinted to the back of the cave to kill him by himself. Because if I wanted to kill every single warrior of Sobek, I was going to be there for seven years. You see that roll spam? That's to do the rolling thrust for the armor pin. I'm telling you, boys. Believers will be rewarded soon. This this video was supposed to be done sooner. But it's... Uh, I forgot how much content is in this fucking game. <laughs> But we did everything. Every single boss fight. Every single dungeon. Oh, check. This one's tragic. Did you guys know you can still die to the sandstorm under here? Oh, it's not here. It's up ahead. You can still die to the... You can die to the sandstorm. I'm in a building underwater. Who designed this? I was doing good, too. This was a good run. And I'm like, all right, I guess I just lose. There's nothing. I... You can't even heal through the sandstorm. You kind of just have to accept your fate. Tragedy. Absolute tragedy. Complete and total tragedy. Somebody was saying, uh, didn't kill the white tiger. The doubters will be in shambles, guys. I'm telling you. The doubters will be in shambles. It's a long fight every time because we don't do any damage. But the non-believers... The non-believers will learn. They will learn tomorrow. Not tomorrow. That's way too soon. <laughs> in a few days, they're going to learn. Look at all the extra aloe I had. I didn't even have to bring a stack down. That's how easy that fight was. Bada bing, bada boom. Easy peasy. Just knifed him. Just gibbed him. Every single boss, boys. Every single one of them. Just checking the stream, making sure that's still running. This was going to be the thumbnail for the video, by the way. I couldn't get the thumbnail to get... So Ironically, the base is very tiny. But I couldn't get the thumbnail to get small enough. <laughs> Who decides this? <sighs> the bull in the midnight. Yep, I, I soloed the entire Midnight Grove, including the werewolf at the end. But I won't spoil that, because that was one of the more difficult fights. It took a lot of practice, but I got a strategy that works for that. I have a plan. Every boss in the game, even the three skulled wolf in Sipta, which this one usually eats me alive. I've got his attack pattern down down to a science. Look at those fucking jukes. Let's hold on. Let's get a replay on that. Look at the jukes. You can sidestep one, the dodge roll. Tell me that's not fucking clean. This this wolf is in shambles. This wolf might as well uninstall. He doesn't stand a chance. Just pull your bracelet off, buddy. It's over. Pull your bracelet off, buddy. <laughs> I'm telling you, dudes. Every single boss. I don't know how many I want to show, because some of these are fairly impressive. I'm not even saying that to suck my own dick. I'm saying, like, so, like uh, some of these bosses, there's three in particular that kicked my ass so fucking hard, I had to set aside a whole other day to practice them. But I got them in the end. Let me see. Do I have the Warmaker... 
I do have the champion here. I'll show that one because that's pretty easy. You can see I have like notes in the video title because I've got stuff I want to put into the video. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't actually do Misha. I didn't do any one skulls. I only did the three skulls just to save myself some time because this by itself is like seven years worth of content, <laughs> seven years worth of recordings. Look at this. Oh, shit. I skipped ahead too far. You know what was really tough? You know what's surprisingly tough? Fucking... Well, not tough, but time consuming. This was another one that I, I forgot this boss was even in the game. I guess that was only 10 minutes. It felt longer. You know what it was? It's because uh, the sun went down and I couldn't see shit. <laughs> that was a process. Did you guys know how dark it gets inside the maelstrom with the with the eclipse going? I think I showed some of the Maelstrom clips. I did the Maelstrom twice because I wanted to kill a boss inside the Maelstrom too, but it's literally, you can't fucking see. <laughs> I was like, hello? It wasn't like that on release. On release, it would always be kind of bright in there, even at night, but it's lit. Yeah, I can't see a damn thing. And you can see towards the end, we're getting swamped. We're getting swamped and we're still holding our own. We're still clapping them. Still clapping cheeks. Still managing these guys. Finessing them. Which map is my favorite? Oh, Sipped it. It's not even a contest. I think the people that, that don't like Sipped have bad taste. Not afraid to say it. Look at that. Rolling right into the mob of them. No fear. No pants. No worry. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Why is Sip to Dead? Because well, there's a lot of reasons. I think PvPers are weenies, but it's also because uh, the, the special gear you unlock in the Sip to Dungeons is so unfun to play against. Let's get the volume on. What am I doing? Just talking to myself. The volume is so... The volume. Now I'm talking to myself with the wrong words. <laughs> Some of those items, you know, like the, the Harpy Spear, just is cancer to play against. See how little damage I do to these fucking things? I don't do any damage to these fucking things. Clearing some of these vaults took a hot minute. <laughs> if I go full screen, do you guys still see it if I go full screen? Because if it's in window mode, it kind of gets kind of a, a wee bit laggy. I don't know if it still shows it if I put it in full screen or not. As long as we can see. Some of these dungeons... Some of these dungeons were really, really easy, and then the other ones... There were three in particular. Someone already talked the Harpy dungeon, dude. Fuck that dungeon. <laughs> that one's a nightmare, even if you fucking have gear. I don't know what those things eat, but they hit so damn hard, it's unreal. And of course, because I'm doing so little damage, and it's on barbaric difficulty, so they're all tankier, it takes like six combos to kill anyone. But I'm telling you, the Believers. The Believers will be in shambles. Look at that juke. That was a double juke. That was a little weak. Yeah, they're not dangerous. They're just tanky as hell. They take fucking forever. There's only three of the vaults that were actually dangerous. Only three of them I would say that were dangerous, and I don't want to spoil them. Something else I wanted to show, but I kind of forget it, what it is now. I think I covered a lot of the big ones, but I want, I want to leave the, the super difficult ones for, for later, because you're going to see... And I think I showed you guys. I did use admin mode to run to the dungeon before anybody breaks my fucking balls. But we did the entire dungeon with heat stroke. We went over that earlier. 
In fact, when it comes to temperature, I didn't use any warming foods. I didn't use any cooling foods. So there's, um, what's it called? One of these. And on barbaric, no less. And on barbaric. Where the fuck is there's another one? I think it was. I think this is the one I did. Yeah, this one I spawned warming food to practice this fight, but you can actually lure him onto the ledge. Which clip is it? Here it is. You gotta kill your way, you gotta kill all the ones by the entrance. But then you can lure him out. And it's dangerous as fuck, because you're on that ledge and he can blow you off, but you can use that bonfire to block the wind. Or you can hide behind this. So each, each one of these bosses had their own little... Oh, you see that right there? Fucking... Let's go back. We were talking about the grub difference a second ago. God, how far back did I go? Did I just skip over it? Oh, there it is. All right. See there? I didn't space properly. We're gonna, we're gonna wind up getting comboed. See, I'm sated buff. The grub comes in clutch with the 2 HP save. <laughs> I'm telling you, the, the grub saved my fucking life. People keep talking shit about the grub. It gives you food. It gives you water. It saves your life. What more do you want? What more do you want, folks? I'm telling you. <laughs> That's all you need. Let's get back in. Let's get back in game here. But that was my little preview, my little preview for the upcoming content. It's going to be a long ass video. Like I said, I don't know when it'll be done because it is such a long video, but two hours long, <laughs> three hours long. You will, you will own nothing. You will eat the bugs and you will live in a two by two and be happy. I guess that's kind of all I had to do today. I wanted to fiddle with a 2x2, two two, show off the 3x3, three three, give away a little a little secret tech that I've been working on. I guess I could log into that server and see how we're doing. See if we're still alive. <laughs> let me, uh... I was actually thinking of switching servers. Let me, let me switch. Let me put a little screen on. I was actually thinking of trying to find... A, uh, a SIPTA server to play on. So I kind of I just don't want to live in the exile lands anymore. I don't want to do it. It's bland. I don't like it. I'm just not a big fan. I'm not even sure if the server I was on is alive anymore. I haven't, I haven't looked at it in almost two weeks. Let's see if somebody found our body vault. <laughs> is there one alive? I mean, honestly, the server the server I'm on is Exiled Lands. And it's Oh, our body vault's still here. We're good to go. I don't know if I want to do anything though. Maybe we'll go server shopping. Maybe that's what we'll do. Unfavorite that one so we can. No, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna group them all together. Let's let's go shopping. Cause there's so much content, but the thing about the world bosses is that 99% of the world bosses are super super easy. Like just unbelievably easy. So you could probably, I, I grouped 99% of them as like one quick little category of like, can you move to the left and the right? Okay, these are easy then. Let's see, what do we, what do we have? Let's do officials. The most populated SIPTA server's got 12 people on it. Although, what time is it right now? Yeah, it's 10 p.m. on a Friday night, so that's still pretty low. And you hate to see it. 
Uh, sometimes I'll use battle metrics. It's kind of it's kind of one of those things you have to play by ear, though. Battle metrics has a weird way of ranking out its servers. That is literally the most populated SIPTA server right now. 6152. 12 people? Oh my god. <laughs> That's fucking tragic. There are three living American servers. That's not bad, though. I mean, these are lower pop, but they're still alive. I prefer to, as as a grub, I prefer to get in there with a small, or with a large population. The more populated it is, <clears throat> yeah. I was gonna say it's it's late in the, or not late. I guess late if your life is a mess like mine is. Early if you if you're a productive member of society. Let's see, six one five two. Let's join six one five two. Let's poke around. God, my voice is already getting fucking hoarse. I've been yelling about boxes. Oh, I already made a character on here. What the fuck? What level am I? I'm level 60. Let's fucking go. Why am I bald? What was I doing on this server? <laughs> what was I doing on the server? Huh? Okay, knowledge. What do we got? I mean, we've got... I don't think we did any vaults on here. We did. We have a couple. We have some like special recipes and whatnot. What the fuck were we doing on this server? Uh, we don't actually have any special recipes. I think I was just thrown off by the these milf force one in the chat. <laughs> I have not played Sons of the Forest. I'm not going to touch that till it's out of early access. What am I? How do? Why do I have a? Why do I have a character on this server? I don't even remember being here. I even have markers and shit. There's a clan. I had these are old base titles. I am marked. I marked a bunch of them. Damn! It's like I didn't even name most of these. How lazy was that? Why would I not name my markers? Maybe this was early. Oh, you know what it is? This server was probably merged. Because I don't remember playing on a European uh, SIPTA server. But this was, I was probably on a different server and I got merged over. Money. I think this was the server Jumby and I were playing on when Sip the first came out and Chinese hackers showed up. It's weird that it would get merged with an EU server, though. Because I remember Money. Money was the name of a guy who killed me in one of the vaults, and then I went over there and wiped him. That's why I remember it. Clapped him, taught him a lesson. I was naked, just running around. He ganked me with a saber tooth back when those were OP. Let's get my voice a break. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go check the map out. Let's get rid of all these empty markers. All these ancient three year old markers that mean nothing now. That's a fun spot to build right there, right at the spawn. Very convenient. You don't need a bedroll there. You can just spawn at that corner. I don't think I had anything else marked. Let's go on it. Let's go on an adventure, boys. Uh, yes, it will. The stream will be put on uh, YouTube once it's done. YouTube does that automatically. It takes a while to buffer, though, so the chat will be missing for the first few days. But uh, it will be up there eventually. Inevitably. This other guy's name is May the Milf Be With You. What was the other guy's name? <laughs> Are they in the same client? <laughs> a lot of MILF enthusiasts on this server. A lot of, a lot of high test individuals.
Why am I bald, though? What was I doing on this server? Ooh, we're open. Little Kronk Cave. We little Kronk Cave. Best cracks to hide in Sipta. Sipta's a tough one. There are not as many places to hide in Sipta. There are good hiding spots, but it's not. It's you're never gonna have anything quite like on Exiled Lands. But the benefit, the plus side, is that because there's no obelisks, I'm talking to the chat, you damn dogs. Unbelievable. Because there's no obelisks, the map feels much larger, so it's a lot easier to stay hidden. It takes more time to scout Sipta than it does to scout the Exile Lands. And because there's not a lot of meta locations, people could live anywhere. Like, there are still really, really good... There's a great cave slash pillar spot right there. This cave, super, super meta. Uh, there's a lot of decent pillar spots, which are probably not very good anymore. I'm not actually sure why there would be an altar there. Maybe they built something, something goofy. There's some caves up here that are nice. There are some awesome caves by the pools, actually. I think probably the best cave in the game is right around here, I think. We'll go check them all. We'll go on an adventure, as long as we're already level 60 and ready to go. <laughs> I was literally thinking in my mind, it's like, I don't know if I want to level another character, though. And then, boom, it's free. It's free real estate. Although, what are my attributes? Is that? I was going to say, they probably reset my attributes. Get agility in there for the sprint. There we go. This character is so old, it was pre 3.0. It's probably several years old now at this point. Sup, dude? Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I think. I don't even think it's the farming, though, because the farming is really easy on Sipta. It's. I think what the issue is, is that because the Conan PvP community is so, it's like Weenie Hut Jr., most PvPers won't touch a map unless they can have a ceiling base. Like, they have to have that crutch. So a lot of people won't touch Sipta because they'll say there's no good base spots. Even though there's tons of good base spots, there's just no ceiling base spots. There's like one cave where you can kind of build a ceiling base but it's not even close to the same as a, as an exile lands base in terms of balance. In terms of balance. Anyways, there's so many options here. What's on the agenda. Uh, nothing today was just a fuck around day. I got home. I felt like messing around. <laughs> had a long day. Felt like shit posting. I was going to talk about something, but I forgot what it was earlier. We messed with the base stacking and then I gave a little preview on the upcoming video. Uh, well, I mean, I play a lot of other games, Flair, but the trouble is I think the algorithm would smother anything I make that isn't Conan, so <laughs> I keep my passions to myself. I do have a second channel that's very neglected. I've been trying to make a video for that channel for ages, and I just don't have the time for it. Yeah, a little, little late-night shitposting. <laughs> Yeah, only Conan and breathing. Made the mistake of talking nonstop the first couple hours. Really catches up to you. <laughs> sup, sup. We are at it. We do be streaming. Let's get rid of this. Well, my second channel, I do game reviews. I don't know if I would really want a variety channel. Maybe later, once I'm big and famous.
Hello? Wait, is the raid window open? What the fuck? I just heard a throw. Oh, it's probably reacting to the crocodile. I was going to say, it's three in the morning over there. That's a wacky ass European raid window. Did I even check if this was a European server? I'm not even sure I checked. Timmy kills a lot. Sorry, I'm killing y'all. <laughs> This man plays Conan. Do I enjoy non-official servers? I hate private servers, to be honest with you. Not even targeting any in particular. I just don't like the way they're set up. I've never had too good of an experience on private servers. I don't enjoy them. I forget the fastest way up this cliff now that I'm over here. It's been a fucking hot minute since I played on Sipta. Yeah, I only do the full PvP. Uh, I did have the audio down quite a bit. I don't have a new chair yet. <laughs> it's the same squeaky fucking chair. In fact, what I did the other day... Was I took it apart and I added a bunch of super glue. I screwed some screws in there that don't really fit. The Frankenstein monster gets worse every day. But it's holding together. <laughs> I will never replace it. Yeah, I thought about getting one of those like foldable camp chairs, but eh, this one this one gets the job done. Plus, this one's got good back support as long as the the nails don't fall out. <laughs> the in game. Oh, you know what it is? I did mute the desktop audio. That's why. I was going to say, I just turned the volume way up. Now it's probably too high. I turned it down because I was doing something else <laughs> earlier when I was showing the other footage. There we go. Audio's back. And cough a bunch now. Uh, there will eventually be a base building video. I have some, some stuff I want to figure out first. Wow, this is open. What a nice spacious cave. I was going to say, this is this used to be a very meta spot. I'm sure everybody's probably on the southern islands, though. They're probably down here. Let's just head down there and check. Yeah, those gamer chairs, dude, those are fucking awful. Like, the racing ones? I've only ever heard bad things about them. Oh, yeah, you're thinking of PvE conflict. Oh, we're just poking around, Nova. But, yeah, PvE conflict is... You know what annoys me about PvE conflict? Is that the PvP window... There's a window for PvP... Like, why not have PvP the entire day, since raiding is disabled anyways? Because what happens is everybody just stays inside their base during the PvP window, and then nothing happens. It's like, what's the, uh... What's the point of that? How long do I play Conan a day? Barely, honestly, at this point. I don't have the, I don't have the time to play. If I had the time to play Conan, I would be filming a series for you guys, but I don't have the time these days. It's weird that the PvP comes in windows on the PvP conflict, conflict servers, though. It's really fucking goofy. The Northeast Beach? 
Oh, you mean this one up here? That one is nice. That's a nice little hidey hole. There's one inside the redwoods over here that's actually kind of nice too for a solo player. See, Ben, thanks for stopping by. When I do play Conan, uh, it depends. These days, because I've got the channel and the videos do really, really well, I can justify putting a lot more time in when I do play. But for my own pride's sake, I won't say how much. <laughs> Would I like to go full-time streamer? I don't know about full-time streamer. Streaming is kind of nice, though, because... <gasps> The thing is, like, I don't want to say I'm a perfectionist, but when I make content for YouTube, I want to make sure it's good. And what happens is I wind up spending a lot of time on little bullshit things that go nowhere. And then I spend, and it, it, it comes out good, but it, the, the time investment is huge. And it's not even because the product is good, it's because I, I think I just, I waste too much time on stuff. And then I spend, like, days stressing about individual scenes and how I want to structure stuff, and then I wind up not using it anyways. Just goes all over the place. I don't know if I'd call myself a Conan player. <laughs> we played it three times in the last year. Barely. Close to minimum wage, that's a bit a bit generous. <laughs> I think because I actually spent money upgrading my computer and my setup. an NPC, I was gonna say. <laughs> but there was, um... No, there's no base up there. We would have seen it from here. Actually, I think my view distance is down. But, uh... What was I gonna say? I spent a lot of money upgrading my computer before I did the Conan movie, because I wanted to make something really, really nice. And I, uh, I upgraded everything. And I spent a lot of money on it. And I still have trouble running this game on high settings. Believe it or not. God, it's fucking dark now. But uh, when I when I did I sat down and I did the math on how much I spent on the PC and then how much I make off the videos. Like I'm I'm in the green now, but it took a really long time for that to pay off. <coughs> and then if I if I crunch the numbers on how many hours go into the content, <laughs> I'm making like two bucks an hour. <laughs> Uh, it is what it is. It's it's fun. Like I enjoy doing it. I enjoy the the editing especially, but it's uh, not the most profitable thing I've ever done with my time. It is passive. That's nice. Like if I if I leave the channel to coast for a couple months, it still brings in a little money every month. L a little a little grub money. Spend it on uh, fajitas. Try to avoid this camp. This camp's kind of a pain. A lot of archers. Do I do the crate run? I'm not sure what that is. You mean grabbing all the little, all the loot from the little uh, chests and whatnot? It's been a while since I've played, since all the changes. What I would typically do is get 60, get star metal, and then just start farming bombs. So I kind of ignore a lot of the grind paths. You know, I liked that one too, Ronan. That was, that was a... Honestly, a one-of-a-kind playthrough. That one did so well in terms of, like, the content and what we uncovered. Completely organically. Completely organically. Just by pure chance happened to come together amazingly. But the YouTube algorithm... Uh, it's... Because of the way that it handles impressions and suggestions. Is that, like, in, an, in a nutshell, there's a lot that goes on underneath the hood. The crates around the ships. No, I don't even know about that. But because of the way the algorithm works, 
to put it as simply as possible, if it shows the video to my subscribers and my subscribers don't want to watch it, which is totally fine. Like if you subscribe for Conan content and you're well within your rights to watch Conan content. But if enough of my subscribers don't want to watch it, then the algorithm, and this is simplifying it, but the algorithm's like, wow, this guy's own subscribers won't click it. This must be trash. So it gets artificially smothered. I think I mentioned in the, the Swamp video about how I had uh, a review for Elisa that got 3,000 views on the main channel in the, in the span of a year. I put, it on, I put it on that second channel and it got 80,000 views in a month because the algorithm wasn't smothering it. So it's just one of those things where it's like, I've, I'm reluctant to even put more time into V-Rising because even with top tier content like that playthrough was, because that went amazingly. We had the reveal, we had the twist, the politics. And it's still like the YouTube algorithm is like, oh, you're, they, they just want Conan content, so uh, you can't do anything else. And then it uh, fucking held a pillow over its head and it stays at like, what, 10, 20,000 views a year and a half later. And I don't want to have to make a new channel every time I play a different game. You know what I mean? But that's how it, well, that's the thing. It's like you could, transition from one game to another, but you'll still be gimped. You'll still be gimped, and the thing is, you'll have to do that every time you want to switch. So it's like... I don't know. Either you start as a variety channel from the start, or you're kind of just locked in. Just kind of the way it works. Hmm? <laughs> surprised my frame rate isn't dipping. Is the video quality uh, pixelated at all? No, the algorithm never improves. It's just how it handles suggestions and whatnot. As long as it works the way that it does. Like, if you've ever wondered why YouTube fucking sucks and all the content on YouTube fucking sucks, it's because it, it pushes content creators into a very tiny niche, and you always get stuck. This cave's open. I'll be damned. Wow, all the cool spots are still open. Wow. But like I said, because of the way it handles those suggestions, it doesn't really matter what you do. You're always fighting against that artificial system. So even if you have content that could succeed, if it was given a chance, YouTube's just going to hold a fucking pillow over your head. Well, yeah, YouTube wants consistency. They want their advertisers to get as much exposure as possible. So, you know, I understand that, but... It leads to a very sterile platform where you can't step out of your niche without it disappearing. It's not the end of the world, but... Like, I have a whole lot of Space Engineers footage that we scrolled past to get to all the dungeon footage. I'll probably never do anything with that. Because <laughs> it's like, you know, even if I sit there and I edit several hundred hours worth of content, I'm gonna upload it. YouTube's gonna be like, that's not Conan. <laughs> And it is false. Damn! That's okay. We checked the one cave we were interested in. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to slap me that quick. Usually the servers are a little laggier. You hate to see it, boys. You hate to see it. Let's see. <laughs> let's, let's check over here. I was chatting and I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I don't know how shorts work, honestly. I'm not entirely sure how those work as far as the algorithm goes. Yeah, and you know what? My Space Engineers playthrough, I went back and I did another one. I got attacked by a hacker who was spawning in crates filled with supplies and blowing them up on my ship. And he was wiping, he wiped like every official server out there. He would teleport to you, spawn in a crate that has like, it's glitched to have max supplies in it. And then break it to blow, and of course, because there's physics. But what the guy did was he thought my ship was all griefed, and he left. And it was just a bullshit ship that I had built because I was still pretty new, new to the server, anyways. But one of the crates he left behind, I was able to break it myself. And because I was in gravity, all the materials fell down. I instantly became the richest man on the server because this hacker was trying to grief me with it. Everybody else got wiped, and I printed out so much stuff. I literally have a million fucking zone chips. It's like 20 billion credits worth of stuff. 
just in the zone shift. It's kind of a tough game to make something happen, though. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, shorts are weird. I don't know how the, the algorithm handles shorts. I know it's a separate category, but I don't know what the science is. Like, videos, people have it down to a science. I never played Age of Conan. I've only played one MMO in my entire life. Or at least seriously played. No, I prefer Sipta. Sipta is my favorite. 100%. The only MMO I ever put serious time into was The Seeker World. It's another Funcom game. Still, still love it dearly. If they put The Secret World, like the old school version of it, back on the shelves and people were able to buy it again and the servers came back online and they were, like, lively, I would play that today. I would turn this shit off and immediately go play it. I would uninstall Conan within five seconds. And immediately, immediately go back to playing Secret World. I wouldn't even think about it. I fucking hate flies, too, man. Wouldn't be so bad if you could just leave the window open and they fucking get out of there, but... They never do. They just bump into the glass. Is Conan worth getting back into? I mean, it's up to you, honestly. It's still Conan. It's got all the Conan issues, doesn't it? Whether it's... Something goofy in PvP or some kind of dupe or something. It is what it is. A lot of consistent problems. PvP is always going to be zerging. You still have, you know, those absolute live-fristed weenies who think you can only play this game in a 10-man group with allies. It is what it is, though. <laughs> is it worth getting into any survival game? Well, that's debatable, isn't it? <laughs> Although, to be fair... Survival games have come a long way. It felt like every single survival game was a was a, a Minecraft copy for the longest time. You'd go punch a tree to get started and then do whatever the fuck. What's happening here? Things have things have really improved though. You know. A lot of survival games bring a lot of stuff to the table. They've got bosses and dungeons and all the rest. Sup Chad? Having a good day so far? messing around. We picked a random server to mess around on, and I already had a level 60 on this uh, server, so. <laughs> I have not played since uh, the update for V Rising. I have, I actually haven't played it since that first playthrough. After I want... Ooh! Oh. Can we rob this man's foot? Any feet enjoyers in the chat? <laughs> Let me in. I don't think he has enough of him sticking out. Oh. <gasps> Double D. Adjust my chat window real quick. That. Am I excited for Dune? Eh, I'm, I'm indifferent about Dune. Uh, I'm not a big sci-fi guy, to be honest with you. Like, even if it winds up being a fun game, I don't like shooters. I don't like sci-fi. This doesn't do it for me. The setting doesn't do it for me. I watched the, the latest Dune movie, and it seems all right, but... I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I don't like games that have shooting mechanics. I prefer if it, if it turns out that it's a melee heavy game, then you know, I'll take a closer look at it. But I'm not interested in playing. For me, shooting games all feel very much the same to me in terms of gameplay. <laughs> Clan name, you taste good. 
<laughs> I've never read the uh, the Dune books. I've read the Conan books though. You could read every Conan story in in a in a weekend. Such short little short stories, except for I think uh, what was that? Hour of the Dragon. It's got like one long book. I mean, long meaning feature length. I guess it's like two hundred pages. It's still not bad. Honestly, I liked them all. I mean, even even the ones that are very formulaic, where he just encounters a creature and saves saves a, a big titty barbarian woman. It's still. It's still an enjoyable setting, you know? It's still fun to read. That's true. I haven't read any of the comics, so I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, I've only read the ones by Robert E. Howard. I've never read the uh, the expanded universe, I guess we'll call it. I'm a particular man. I wanted it from, from the man himself. Am I crazy? Wasn't there a cave right here? Is there down here? Heard of, heard of Carnage? Nope. Although, to be fair, I don't keep track of uh, Conan clans. I just sort of fuck around. I don't, uh, I don't play for clout. I don't associate with people that uh, play for clout, so I don't really keep track of names. Am I a Lovecraft kind of guy? Eh, kind of. Although I'll say though, which uh, before we move topics, I'm not saying that to insult Carnage, whoever they are. I'm just saying I don't keep track of uh, keep track of clans' reputations or nothing like that. But uh, am I a Lovecraft man? No. <laughs> You know what, I like Lovecraft's stories. I could have sworn there was a cave. Is it this one down here? I think it might be this one here. I think it might be this ridge here. But I, what I should have said is I like Lovecraft stories. I don't like Lovecraft media, if that makes sense. I think too many of them are like, there's squids involved and you go crazy. And that's it. That's as far as they go. Gasp, you looked in the direction of a squid. Now your vision's all fucking blurry and you gotta uninstall. <laughs> I feel as though the man covered more topics than that. It's kinda of, it's kind of a shame. Are there any other melee focused survival? Oh, somebody mentioned Last Oasis earlier, but I never played that game while it was still alive. You know, I've never actually played Bloodborne either. That's I love the Dark Souls games. But I'm just not going to buy a fucking PS4. I'm not going to buy an entire console to play Bloodborne. Do I really need to build a repair hammer? Where's the door on this thing? I knew there was a cave here. Let me in. It's actually yeah. I didn't think it would actually be honeycombed. Honeycombed with no door. Well, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. It's not that... It's not that large of a cave, though. It's kind of weird that it would just come straight there and then cut off. I wonder if that's, like, in the process of being built. It's going to take me six years to get to the other side. Let me see. Have I played the new Diablo? Nope. Probably never will, neither. <laughs> Certainly not for seventy dollars. 
I'm a uh, I'm a path of exile, Chad. So ain't nobody got the time. Oh, we're naked scouted. What we did is that we picked a random Sipta server, and I happen to already have a level sixty here, so we're just running around looking for stuff. So we've technically only been on the server like an hour. Well, part of it's that it's seventy dollars, but it's also that Diablo three for me was such a a huge letdown that I don't I don't know I don't know why I would ever spend seventy dollars on the next Diablo. Diablo three was so basic and dumbed down. Uh, there is actually stuff I'm hyped for, but not in Chapter One of the next update. Chapter Two has some some stuff for PVPers. I don't think I'm allowed to say anything more, but I've 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 talked to some people, I should say. That's all I can say, though. <laughs> I think Dennis said I could say it's the big one. They say we'll have we'll have a bit of a shakeup. We'll have some stuff, some new toys, so to speak. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's enough to fix PvP in its entirety, but we have some, some long-requested changes. Yeah, there's no doors on this. These guys are doing teleporter base. Let me in. Let me in. Yeah, so Chapter 2, it's got... Uh, there's some nice stuff. And honestly, even outside of the PvP stuff that's coming... Most of which hasn't been announced yet, so if you're thinking I'm excited about anything in particular, it's all stuff that they're going to talk about later, I guess. But, uh, honestly, the NPCs he does just sound fun. I just think that's a fun concept. That by itself, to me, just seems like a fun thing to have in this kind of game. That's what people have always wanted the Surge, not the Surge, the Purge to be. I don't think the story stuff will impact PvP, but they're going to change some systems around. <laughs> the new pet getting rid of Sip to make it a free. I don't know about that. Dream update? Uh. The one that fix all the dupes and the exploits and the flying bases and then wipes the server. Wipes every single official server. <laughs> Cause I the jank in this game doesn't bother me. It's the fucking it's the it's the fact that every server has seven hundred body vaults on it of duped up dragon powder. And every single server's got twelve flying bases on it. And the three undermesh locations that are still alive are always taken because there's still people using them. Like delete the uh, the Sipta gear, the stuff that comes from the dungeons, all the, like the the harpy spear and whatnot. Wipe the servers, fix the dupes. I mean, the game would be. I think we could all deal with the jank. Just you know, get rid of all that shit. You know, I actually liked Egypt in the Seeker world. I liked it a lot. The City of the Sun God was a lot better than the base Egypt, though. But it still has its charm. Ugh, I gotta crack my neck. My chair's so fucking bent. It's messing up my posture. Yeah, I'm not even saying, like, monthly wipes. I'm just saying, like, one to get rid of all the fucking decades-old nonsense. The only people that complain about a wipe... I feel like we talked about this last time we streamed. I shouldn't even get started. <laughs> the fucking, the ten-man weenies are like, Wait a minute, but I have the keyhole. You can't wipe the surfers. It's like, don't be a fucking weenie. <laughs> my A1 base. The base that I meshed into the Black Keep. You can't get rid of that. It, it took me days to build that. <laughs> if I could add a weapon type? Uh... You know what? I, I don't think I'd add one. I would rework javelins. Because I think those would be a nice alternative to throwing, throwing axes. 
I don't know what I would do to them, but you know. <laughs> I just think javelins are more caveman esque. They're more unga bunga. <laughs> what about the people that have been refreshing for two years? Refreshing their bases. Oh, the traps! We don't have the health for that. Ugh. God, those hit hard. See, I don't, I don't actually like the idea of recurring wipes. I think the permanence of, of Conan's surface is actually kind of cool. It's one of the reasons I like Conan. But just one to get rid of all the rest of it. You know what I mean? Just get rid of all the fucking nonsense. Javelins used to be the highest DPS PV weapon in the game. You could sprint forward and just chain the light attacks together. I don't think they still do that, though. Uh, if you're logging on to refresh, I mean, it's not that I think that that's bad, but I think people need to learn when to let things go. Just in general, this isn't even like a PvP thing. I think being attached to a base for years is like... Where am I going? I'm supposed to go this way. That's just people that they don't know they don't want to lose their it's one thing if it's a PvE base and they've spent a lot of time decorating and whatnot and they're attached. I understand that, but you know, obviously every every time I say wipe, I'm talking specifically yeah. PvP servers. Yeah. I think if you sign into a PvP server, yeah. the unspoken yeah. agreement is that you're okay with your base getting deleted at some point. Whether that's from a raid or a god or explosives <laughs> or the admins decide to shrink it. Oh. Yeah. The idea that you can keep your base forever and ever is like, you're on the wrong server type. You need to go play something else. You can't be on the PvP server. And then also be mad if anything happens to your pixels. It's one or the other. Well, it's one of those things. I mean, if, if wipes are on the table, then even if you get another dupe in the future, you know, you fix the dupe and wipe the servers, it's no problem. looking for a specific cave. I kind of forgot where it was. <laughs> Bear with me, everybody. We're running in circles while we chip both of the jet. Lost connection with server. Huh? They're actually adding, I think in chapter two, they're adding the ability to, to swivel or, or pivot while attacking. I don't know, it could could potentially shake things up. I don't know how I feel about that, honestly. I'm also not sure how I feel about the stamina stuff either, but I'm not against either of it. I want to see how it feels first. I actually test, I did a bunch of test lab combat and it feels pretty good for PvE. Obviously getting PvP on the test lab is impossible, but... I don't know. Have I played on Oceanic servers? No. I played very briefly on an Asian server, and it was all hackers, so I left. <laughs> it was all hackers. Hitting the wrong key for the map. I think the cave is over here, isn't it? Oh, it might be down here, actually. I might be way too far north. I'm way too far north. <laughs> I haven't had to scout this island in fucking ages. Uh, honestly, dude, server transfers? Server transfers are fine as long as you can't bring items. Like, that's all. If you want to bring a character around, that's fine. Just, you know, you can't have people farming on a dead server. Transfer in with 12 million dragon powder. That's just a lose for everybody. I don't think they have any plans for another map. I think if they were going to add a map, if they were even thinking about it, I think what Funcom would probably do is maybe buy the license for some of the, the community maps. What's that one that everybody's been playing on? It's like Savage Wilds, I think. 
Like, I, I don't think Funcom would ever develop another map, because people still hate Sipta, even though it's a really good map. I think they don't want to put the resources in. But, you know, maybe official support for maps like that. You never know. Yeah, I, I agree with Troy. I don't think they'll ever do it. Even though I like Sipta a lot. I, I like that they added this map. Why is Sipta not like people have shit taste? But it's also because some of the items on here are fucking busted and cancer to play against. So, <laughs> it is what it is. No, Stealthor, they can't do anything with the top right of the map, because that's where all the Chinese build their bases. <laughs> that's why they can't wipe the servers, all those flying bases in the corner of the map. It would be a shame if those disappeared. <laughs> I don't know why role players hate Sipta. I don't get it. Maybe it's because I don't role play, but it's think of, think about it. like what do you do on a role play server? You role play with other people and you build pretty bases, can't you? So how does how does Sipta not facilitate that? There's plenty of places to build. There's lots of cool stuff. Ah, oh, somebody does have this spot. I almost wonder if there's like a chest in one of these foundations. Is report meta still a thing? I don't know. I haven't played in almost nine months myself. <laughs> that swamp playthrough I just did, dude, I haven't touched the game since that. I think watching an entire server get banned and quit for weeks and weeks and weeks straight, I just couldn't handle it. <laughs> I could see that being an issue. Maybe it's because nobody owns Sipta. They want to have to buy the DLC to get it. I think if I do another challenge playthrough, I'll do like a volcano only or something like that. I wanted to wait to do another challenge run because I don't. There's no point in doing a challenge run if you can just trade in sorcerers. You know what I mean? That kind of cheapens it. But once those are gone, I'll think about it. You can actually get wood in the volcano, believe it or not. Believe it or don't. I think I, I figured out a way to survive in the volcano and get just about everything you need. The server seems kind of dead, though, boys. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. All the good cave spots are barely built in. I was just surprised I had a character on this fucking server. Clicked a random Sipta server and had a level 60 just lying around. Yeah, I, I can get that too, Zeho. It's like... Sipta, I guess they, they think Sipta's not, but a lot of the Sipta content is actually inspired directly by the lore. Like, these summoning pools are directly from a Conan story. Along with the gray ones. A lot of the sorcery, the creatures, like, most of this is very Conan lore friendly. It's just not... It's just not Exiled Lands. I think people just have a preference, I guess. Oh, we're starving to death. It's too late, boys. <laughs> yeah, we do have some random level 60s lying around. I used to have a level 60 on most servers. I think I got rid of some of them. Let's go here. Oh, it's not that it's quiet. It's that there's not a lot of bases. Like, that's the issue. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you some stuff. Somebody asked earlier, how do you get wood in the volcano? It's a reasonable question. 
Half the problem is there's dead server or dead servers, dead trees. These don't give any wood. So you might think. No, hold on. I put God mode on before I fucking die heat stroke. <laughs> But what a lot of people don't know... These give wood. Believe it or don't. I don't know how these count as wood, but they do. Yeah, if they made Sith of free, I don't know, maybe they could like, give people who bought it something. It's a shame though. It's, it's not even super expensive for how much content you get. I mean, you think it's like 12 dungeons plus another like 50 bosses plus, you know, surge content, maelstrom content. There's so much stuff. <coughs> yeah, that would make sense, Ari. It's just make, just give it for free and then you buy the building pack. Yeah, they're, they're like cactus. You do have to suck some poison air to get it. But you do get wood. And as for brimstone, let me let me show you. I don't know how many of these even spawn anymore. The trouble with brimstone is there used to be boss creatures here that you could mine and they would give you brimstone. They replaced them all with these rock noises that don't do it anymore. But I think there's still a few. I know there's two by the center here. Let's see if I'm still correct. This game changes so much between updates, I, I never know anymore. So that one, that was just a regular rock nose. Somewhere in here, there's, you'll see what I, it's not a lot of brimstone, but you can kill it. There we go. This is, this is the magic. See, that time we got zero brimstone. So brimstone's gonna be a problem. But you can get brimstone. I think if I used a regular pick. Yeah, we got one brimstone out of that. Although I think the gathering rate is on 1x because I'm on single player, but. So it's not a lot, it's not a lot of brimstone. But there do be brimstone. Since when has this been in the game? What the fuck? This is the first time I've ever seen this. Oh, this must have been added with the gold. Do you give brimstone? Lame. So you can get you can get brimstone and you can get wood. It's not a lot of brimstone, admittedly, but it's enough to make a couple bombs and then maybe you can get lucky, lucky somewhere. And these guys over here, these guys drop so much steel. Oh, of course, you know, compared to farming it, it's still fucking bad, but you can get everything you need out of the, the Will of Skellos in terms of other spells. Surprisingly. Always fine. I forget why I had that up. But from these loot crates, you can actually get a lot. So if you wanted to do a, a, a volcano only, you could skin these for a lot of reptile hides. Get a get a well made so you're not dying nonstop to a heat stroke. Come in here and farm the place. It has potential. I think it'd still be pretty gimped, but this is what I would do. Weirdly enough, the thing you're going to be lacking in the volcano is uh, you're going to be missing iron. Because there's no iron in here. I don't even think there's any bearer spawns, so you can't kill them for iron bars. It's gonna be like the weirdest 
the weirdest uh, bottleneck. Well, you can get plant fiber from the NPCs. They drop it in these amounts. Some of the rock noses spawn as brimstone rock noses. Well, you know, if we happen upon one of those, that's even easier. Looking for hidey spots? <laughs> Someone was talking about hidey spots earlier. This spot used to be really good. This spot used to be pretty nice to hide in. It's too well known now, but I mean, depends on the server you're on, honestly. Volcano's not great for hiding spots. There's that little path. Then if you come all the way up around here. This is one of those green wall bases, so you gotta be careful where you step. If you can build in here. Awesome hiding spot here. Even when people know about it, very few people scout it. This is way in the back of the volcano. Has sorcery done anything to official? I haven't played official at all, to be honest with you, since pre 3.0. So I have no idea what the current meta is, to be honest with you. <laughs> Zero ideas. You can build up here to hide as well. People can kind of see you from the bottom if the fog is off, so it's not a guarantee, but up here in general it's very solid. Like in this little nook. In here. Yeah, I, ju I just can't comment on the current meta because I, I haven't played since the Swamp playthrough. I've been logging in and messing around just for the streams, but in terms of actually playing. If anything, sorcery, from what I can tell, makes it easier to deal with flying bases because you can fly up there and you don't necessarily have to jump. You can just fly and then feather fall onto it. Well, yeah, it's getting late. Some late night shit posting, boys. What time is it? Almost 11. Well, we've already been for three hours. That's a surprise. Am I going to be playing more? Uh, if I ever get the time, then sure. But I can't make any promises. That's the trouble. No, I got to push my schedule back. I got to do stuff tomorrow. So we'll stay up a little bit more. We'll make it work. <laughs> uh, I don't know about this Sunday. I may or may not have something to take care of on Sunday. I'm working on a very long video that I teased a little bit at the start of this video, so at the start of the stream, I should say. PvP coach? I don't do a lot of PvP, to be honest with you. I'm more of a rat. I would PvP more if every clan I encounter didn't have 12 people in it. Kind of just have to Kinda have to play it by ear. You know, a lot of people have sworn by Kenji. I, I, it's been on my to-do list for the longest time, but I still haven't made any time to play it. It's one of those things. That, it's just in my. It's on my to-do list. And honestly, I don't even know what secrets are left. I don't know what, what wisdom I could give to people beyond hide and... <laughs> I don't know. Podcast? Uh, I don't know about podcasts. I think podcasts are a little overplayed. I think a lot of people post podcasts because they think they've got stuff to say. I don't know. Plus, I don't, I don't think there's much demand for podcasts. I think, I think that's a very overplayed genre of content. I think a lot of people... I'm not even sure I'm going with that. I don't know. I don't like podcasts. <laughs> Rather do a PvP Valheim server. I hated Valheim so much. It was unreal. <laughs> it's not even a bad game. I just It was so unbelievably grindy. 
I don't know why they committed to making it so grindy on release. It still is, too. I didn't, I just didn't like it. I have a review of it on my second channel, actually. Yeah, this is the podcast. There you go. That's not this one. It's over here. Nah. Well, it's it's the grind for everything. It seems like every... Yeah, somebody was saying that the water is blocky on Sipta. This area in particular bugs out every time, and I don't know why. Like, when you get close to it, it goes away, but... The minute you're away from it, the entire ocean disappears. I have played Ark. I uh, didn't like it. I don't see the appeal of it. You know what's gonna happen is everybody that watches these these live streams after the fact, I think they're gonna they're gonna be like, this is the thousandth time he's been asked about V Rising and Ark. <laughs> I hated Ark. I, I just don't like it. My fiance and I played it for a bit. Yeah, you have to like dinosaurs. I'm not a big dinosaur guy. I just think they're kind of lame. I know they're very popular, very popular content. Wouldn't it be cool to build right here? This seems like such a cozy spot to live. The sound design for some of these areas is great, too. The exotic birds and whatnot. I'm kind of just stalling. I, we, we should probably wrap it up. We had a very busy stream for three hours. It was a little a little miniature stream. A little, a little late night shit posting. Not sure what else I would do today. I can't really play tonight. Hmm. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. There's one little itty bitty patch. You can't really have a whole base there, but you can squeeze squeeze like a foundation or two, which, you know, as we were talking about stacking earlier, could fit a whole base in one of those itty bitty spots. Arc just doesn't it's just not fun to me. I don't see what the appeal is. You know what it is? I never like Pokemon either. Where you catch a Pokemon and then you walk back and forth in the grass to grind up their stats. It just seems so stupid to me. I think if you grew up with it, maybe. But I, I just... That whole... That method of gameplay. The idea of grinding... Like, Conan tried to copy Ark when they did the, uh, the Thrall rework with the stats. I've never once cared about what perks my Thralls get. I'll never... I'll never farm up Thralls for their perks. I will never squat there and, and replace them and try to breed a good thrall if they ever add that. I still have the time for that. Even when I do play Conan seriously, I'm just playing as, as budget as possible, living out of the sandstone shack and grubbing it. Before I go, should I add legacy, legacy servers? Uh... I think the novelty of those would probably wear off pretty pretty quick. Cause I know I know most of us like old school PvPers have a soft spot for you know the old school roll we could roll halfway across the map. Like it would be fun to fuck around with it for a bit, pick a weekend and just put on Darfari like the good old days. But I don't think it would have any staying power. And half the issue is right now, it's it's not even that the meta is really terrible. I mean, there's a lot of really shitty parts of the meta currently, but... I mean, from my experience anyways. That what kills my playthroughs and my enjoyment of the game is the fact that I can hop onto a server and spend an entire 150 hours on a server and get nothing out of it because everybody's quitting or getting banned. I mean, it's been consistent for years at this point where whole servers will, people will join, and people will play. The server will have 40 people on it, but the people that join play for one weekend and then never come back. And the people that stay are duping and undermeshing and building flyer bases, or it's the usual suspect. That's a pain. So I, I think even with different server types, I don't think that changes the, the core problem. 
it would still be fun. You know, like if Funcom was like, hey, well, here's a fucking, here's a release Conan server. Get your Darfarion and we'll all go farm the, uh, the King Beneath for that one. Was that, was that spear, the curved one with the curved bit? <laughs> Whatever the fuck that was called. It'd be fun for like a weekend. What's my opinion on the stamina rework? Uh, I'm about right in the middle for it. I think with a, with a little bit of a Kingslayer polearm, that's the fucking one. I couldn't think of it all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, see, these guys remember. <laughs> that plus fucking, what was it, Kambuja medium? And then later you'd have the Kambuja Helmon and Darfari Light. The good old days, the classics. That was the classic fit. It is a cool base, a cool spot to build into. Not good, but, you know, atmospheric. Gross! This guy horse PvPs. You know what? That's what I would change. If there's one thing I could just get rid of in, in in its entirety, mounts in general, just snap the Thanos snap him out of existence, delete them. I wouldn't even think about it. Nerd emoji, this man. <laughs> Thug shakery. <laughs> They need to add a drum that does the vine boom sound effect when you hit it. <laughs> Just for the occasional shitpost. Nightman, thanks for stopping by. I'm not far behind you. We're just stalling at this point. Thanks for stopping by, my man. And no problem. There's only one other thing I wanted to look at. I wanted to see if they changed this cave at all. There's one cave over here that is surprisingly clutch before I wrap this shit up. Yeah, the days of wiping clans by yourself, I think those are those are long gone. Too, too many knowledgeable players. <laughs> Too many perma bubbles, too many ceiling bases. And to be honest, I think I don't think solo players should be able to run around wiping ten man groups anyways, but I also don't think there should be ten man groups, so it's a it's a give and take where you just have the worst of both worlds. <laughs> Skill issue. Eh, maybe. Part of it's also just burnout. I mean, these days I log in, I can guess where all the meta spots are, where all the all the clans are built every single time, instantaneously. Whoa, Fortnite? I'll check it out. Thanks, dude. Am I stupid? Was there not a cave right in this area? It's got to be further back, doesn't it? Unless it's underneath. Next valley down? Oh, that could be it. I don't think so. I remember it being in front of this camp. Could try PvE. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know what I would do on a PvE playthrough. For those of you that weren't here earlier, I teased the next video that's coming up. I killed every single boss and ran every single dungeon in the game, butt naked, fully corrupted. Grubs, weak aloe potions, the works. If I did a PvE playthrough now, I don't even know what I would do. So already, <laughs> I've already soloed the whole game naked. It's at the start of the ri I, of course it's been a it's been a long ass time. Oh no no, you're thinking of the waterfall cave. I'm thinking of a different one, the very tiny one. I'm almost certain it's right here. 
grief and troll heads. <laughs> Probably all I could do on a PvE server and have fun. I was certain there was a tiny little cave here. Maybe it might even be up. I feel like I must be just overlooking it. I swear to God it was right outside this can. And I've never actually built into it. Southeast from your spot. I'm a fool, chat. I can't find it. I swear to God, I thought it was right here. <laughs> I just keep flying past the same spot. How would I change PvE? Well, the thing is, they'd have to change the boss move sets. That's what it is. It's it's not a damage issue. Even if every boss killed you in one hit, it's uh, it's that their attack patterns are are too bland. Mountain with water on it. So you saying like right here? Oh, that's what I'm looking for. Cause there is there is the waterfall base up here, which was pretty meta before they made they changed the collision. There's this one here. This one's so weird to build inside because it's so lopsided, but it's not bad. So down here. Oh yeah, I know which cave you're talking about. I feel like I'm going crazy though. I swear to God, it was right here. Hold on, let me let me let me go right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna squat right here. Tell me which direction I go, guys. <laughs> it's the one that's right in this area, but I don't know specifically where it is. Yeah, the unnamed city bosses have normal movesets. The the bat's got a unique one, and the dragon's got, you know, because the hitboxes are so fat, it's a little different. They've added some cool bosses, though. Like, Sipta has a lot of cool bosses in it, but nobody plays it, so... Northeast over that mountain. Okay, let's, let's try it. Let's try northeast over the mountain. I don't know. I don't remember it being over here, boys. Hmm. Check Discord. Okay, let me check that. Yeah, I see the screenshot. Whereabouts is that? Ah, uh, okay, I got you. I must have I must have just been running right past it. There it is. This this is so tucked in there. God damn it! We were running right past it. Look at this. What a well-hidden little little hidey hole. If I was going to build a little base, it would be in this little hole. See, I was in the right spot. I had the right thought process, but that really fucking blends in there. You can just fly right past it. That's why it makes such a good hidey hole. scroll up forgot what I even came here to do now <laughs> yeah there's a bunch that are like this but remember how we were practicing our stacking earlier I mean you could fit an entire base in here 
Creepy pasta reading. I don't think I have the right voice for that. Yeah, Sipta is covered with these little caves. Somebody mentioned preferring one that's up here. I also like this one. It's not as good now that you can print out so many supplies, but... It's... Here. This one is so cozy because you can kind of build out of it since the cliffs continue. And you can just like honeycomb the roof kind of. Obviously it's not cost effective anymore. Nightscap, thanks for stopping by. Use auto-tune. Yeah, I don't think that'll help. I don't think that'll help. I don't think I have a voice for creepy bastards. Yeah, you got a lot of space in some of these caves. Of course, they had to change the uh, the collision on a lot of these caves because they were so meshable. I don't know how many guys played when Sipta was first released, but literally every server had undermesh bases on it. Jumbie and I were dealing with a clan that had meshed underneath one of these trees because there's a little vertical cave. I don't even think you can build it anymore. Actually, it's probably easier if I just walk. Get all these. There it is. This little... I don't even think you can still build in here. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think they just made it a no-build one. Because... We had this this Chinese clan that had built inside this cave, and they meshed all the way around this cave. And it was such a nightmare, because it's... It's one thing if you have a cave inside a cliff, because then you can still hit it with gods. But this spot, we couldn't got it. So it was just... They would just sat there forever, and we couldn't do anything about it. Originally, I think some of those caves were supposed to be... I think they were actually really trying to give players building alternatives, but because they couldn't figure out how to make those not meshable, they just... A lot of those became no-build zones, which to me is fine. That's a fine answer to that. I would rather the caves just not be buildable, as opposed to being buildable, but then they're all meshed. Because that's such a nightmare to deal with. This is another interesting one for a solo player. Oh, you can't build here anymore. Wow. They really patched them all. That's probably for the best, though. <laughs> this was such a... I had a base in this cave once. <laughs> it's so tight in here. But it's kind of a long, winding cavern. And with the right setup, they can't actually get in there. Sipta has a surprising amount of caves on it. I think we actually checked on the live server a second ago. There was one over here. This one's actually large enough to put a solid base inside. And it wasn't taken on the server we checked, weirdly enough. How come we never got a, a Sipta PvP? There's just no living Sipta servers. It's very hard to find a Sipta server with people on it. In the claws above the spider dungeon. Um, are you talking about the big cave or the tiny one? This one's actually meta. It's large enough to build an actual base inside. And I know pillar bases are trash now, but you could have the cave base and a pillar base, plug that with a drawbridge, then you have two super powerful bases. You had to claim this pillar, though. What do we have to climb to get it? Uh, I know there's a vertical cave over there that's pretty good. I know we launched a, a Sipta server a long time ago, and Jumbie and I built our base right in the center of the map. It's actually kind of a pain. I didn't expect the Maelstrom to be such a problem, but we just couldn't play the game for two hours. <laughs> Every couple hours, the Maelstrom would... would Kirk, or trigger rather. 
And then we'd just be drowning. We'd just be drowning in creatures. Oh, well, they didn't nerf pillar bases. It's just that now that people can fly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> verticality isn't the same obstacle it used to be back in the day, so. It is what it is, boys. You just got to adapt as best you can. I mean, part of the issue, too, is just how easy it is to get explosives. I mean, how do you, how do you honeycomb against people that are farming 6,000 dragon powder in an hour? <laughs> There's no base on this planet that's large enough to even slow that down. You gotta hit a nice... You gotta hit a comfortable middle ground. <laughs> you like my stacked base? <laughs> Nicely packed away. I've got some tech I've been cooking on. Coming up with some nice stacking techniques. Honestly, if I was going to body vault on this server, or not this server, but this map, I wouldn't even go for a cave. I think those would get checked. i just climb to the top of one of these. Hide in one of the little nooks. <sighs> I'm getting fucking sleepy. I think it's about time we wrap this up. We had, It's a very quick shit post little fun posting late night fun posting don't have nearly enough time to do an eight hour stream this time around <laughs> give you some fatherly advice well as soon as mine comes back with the milk i'll pass it on to you secondhand <laughs> night everybody thanks for stopping by just a quick little quick little stream i had a couple hours to burn thank you everybody I gotta get an exit song going or something. I'll I'll slap something together. Night everybody. If you missed any part of the stream, you can check it. It'll be on the channel and it will render eventually. Or stop by the Discord and say hi. <laughs>